Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block Pizza. It's a special kind of place. Do you like that kind of place? Then you should go there. It's in Los Angeles on the way to the beach. 1811 Pico Boulevard. Gray Block. Get that hitter. Today's guest is uh, a comedian. He is a man that I actually don't know super well. Uh, I'm happy to have him here. He's from another continent, I believe. I'm not sure all the different continents. And he um, and he just has a lot going on. He's about to go on, a, on an Australian tur- tour. He's been around the world doing stand-up. Uh, he's achieved many of his dreams. And now he's, he's hosting a, a daily talk show here in America, even though he isn't from here. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Jim Jefferies. tall are you man because i was just i woke up this morning i was thinking to myself i was like how tall is is you know well i that's a weird thing to be thinking about imdb have me at like 5 10 but i'm i'm almost six one yeah why do I they just, do that you well think? i feel like someone just took a guess at that or maybe five nine they call me or something i, I have the appearance of a short person I'm yeah all, i'm all torso i've got little tiny legs yeah what is that you think is that like an australian thing i'm a i'm a sloucher as well my posture is not good but no i'm quite tall yeah Quite tall. Were you always tall, like when you were young, or were I'm you, the, was it something that just I'm happened? I'm the shortest member of my family, so my like like a, like a, out of my siblings. Yeah, um, my parents are both shorter than me, but but um, my my brother's six four, and my other brother's six two or three. And do they like you, your siblings? They do. They 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 like me, but they don't like each other. Really? Yeah, they're getting better. They're getting better. They didn't like each other for many many years. They didn't talk for well over a decade, I don't think. And do you mediate that kind of stuff? Like, are you? It's it's all through the power of stand up. I do a show in Sydney. They I'm only there for one show. That their friends want to get tickets, and so so they all come backstage, and then that's when they started talking again backstage at my gigs. Really? Yeah. Without my gigs, they wouldn't have they wouldn't have met up again. I don't think. Now it would have taken a funeral. Yeah. And and is that a popular thing in Australia? Like funerals, bro- love them. Bro- oh no, <laughs> brothers don't get along. Like a lot of um... no, I, don't, I think that's a popular theme across the world. I don't think it's a distinctly Australian thing. I think uh, uh, um, Americans have as, probably more family rifts in America because you have religion thrown into the mix. Yeah, and I'm sure that doesn't help. And this is where it's our Thanksgiving weekend, and. I'm sure people are going off to fight with their family or dreading it. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, there's a lot of domestic d- domestic violence and stuff like that. I think it brings families together in the end, you know? What, the domestic violence? Well, it usually, like, the the violence is what kind of quells the heat. The, the heat is before the violence. The friction is before the violence. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You need to have a little blow up. You yeah. To, yeah, you need to have a little family. You got to have family, a f- family block. I fight with my family all the time. I mean, I'm in constant battle. Do you fight on Skype or do you guys fight on the on the phone? Or well, you- I, we have to fight on the phone because with my parents because they can't text or anything, you know. But like, like for instance, I, I, I'm about to tour Australia and my brother, I, the whole reason behind this Australian tour is because my brother's getting married. So I'm going out for his wedding and I agreed to fly my father across the country business class so he could come to the wedding. Wow. Right? And so from Sydney to Perth, which I, because I was doing the tour, I could have gotten it in the, the Qantas is spon- like uh, do, helping us out with the tour and so like that. I could, I could have gotten him a good rate. And I kept on saying, don't worry, dad, you just have to show up to the airport and the ticket will be there. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And then he started to panic, started to panic. And three weeks ago, now the wedding's not until another two weeks from now, three weeks ago at the fear that the flight would be sold out, he went and bought a ticket. Wow. On the airline that I'm on. <laughs> And so I had a big fight with him. I'm like, I was getting you the ticket. He goes, well, you could just pay for the upgrade. Now I'm paying for an upgrade. Right. That was more expensive than the... So it's just, you know, old Where people. does that come from? Old people do that kind of stuff. They want to be if, sure. Like my stepdad will get to the airport. He'll take my mom to the airport two hours before. Yeah. And they live in a small city, you know? Three hours international. Yeah, it's crazy. Three hours international. That's what is they, that? Because they listen to when the government tells us shit. And the government goes, okay, because of terror, you now have to get there three hours before in case there's a hold up. Yeah. It's only an hour. You have to get there an hour before. I, I dated a, 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 an attractive woman who who she wouldn't go until like 20 minutes before. And I was always told I couldn't get onto planes if I wasn't there like 50 minutes before. Yeah. And she'd always still get her luggage put through and everything. It was bizarre to see. Chicks yeah. get that. Yeah, it was bizarre to see. But my, yeah, my dad had to have, and he couldn't fathom the idea that he just showed up with his license. You had to have the paper ticket. Oh yeah, and so he went to a a, a, a um, travel agent 
Can you imagine Can't even. going and sitting in in a booth with a person with going a bell on the door probably? Yeah, where you go you go, I'd like to go on holiday. Ah, <laughs> oh, well here's some ideas. You could do this or that. Imagine like how is that only exists that job only exists because of the elderly. Yeah. Because they can't fathom another way to do it. But like it's even more work than yeah. doing it yourself. Oh, dude, it's yeah, having the I mean, look, the elderly are a whole it's a dirty business what people do to the elderly. You know? Where they, they still keep them attached. Selling to... them gold, like, you know. Oh, yeah. Selling them gold. I, I, oh, do they I, do that in your country, too? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of gold. There's a lot of reverse mortgages. Oh. Reverse mortgages are good where they sort of go. Fire they, safety. They start this. going, oh, it's not the The kids don't need the house. Yeah. You live now and your thing. And it's the fact is they could just sell the house. Moats. They sell and them then, everything. They'll sell them a fucking moat. We'll come and dig a moat around well, your house. Well, I, I got a, a moat? Yeah, they sell everything. All type who's, of land. Who's getting moats? Not a lot of people, but I've seen a couple, and you know who had them? Senior citizens, dude. It's always seniors. They, they got think, everything. They think that the moat will stop people from getting into their property? Stop fires, stop, uh, yeah, weak burglars, stop people that, you know, uh, maybe different types of animals. Think about it. Right, so if you live on a farm, you get a moat. Then would you have a bridge that goes down? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's or you extra. Have, or you have, a cu- you have a solid bridge that's always there. I think you'd have a solid bridge. I mean, if you're senior citizens, you can't have them, you know, looking for like a button to put a bridge down in the middle of the night or in the <laughs> afternoon. But it's crazy. The stuff they sell to seniors, man, everything, special clothing, fire. Like the big thing now they're selling to them in America is fire-resistant stuff. Get I, this fire-resistant clothing, fire-resistant. I, I got my mother a, a life alert necklace, one of those ones with the button that the ambulance comes. That you never seen my dad more disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he just, it was like his sentence had just had five years added to it. Like he, he literally looked at it like this. He goes, so, so the ambulance will always come from now on, will they? Okay. All right. This is what we're doing. You know, I, I, I got it. I, she, my mum's got like the, the Bentley, the Rolls Royce of walkers. Mm-hmm. I got the, I got the most expensive walkers. Oh, really? What is it now? When you get to those upgrades, what is it like? Well, the thing is the cheap one's like 20 bucks and yeah. your, your top one's like 800. Oh, wow. But it's got like uh, the frames lighter or it clicks in properly. Or I just said, look, what's your best one you've yeah. got? <laughs> yeah, you can't put your mom on a bad one. Well, I can't. I like, like. I think they already put the ten- There's, oh, those tennis balls they put on the end of walkers. Yeah, that's sexy. That's appeal. Yeah, but it's got to be. Someone's got to just actually make those balls. We can't just be cutting into tennis balls. Just make a rubber ball that goes over the end. Yeah. The, the green test, but make it a nice black matte finish. But I think there's something swaggy about it. It's like how black guys kind of hang their pants down. You know, I think it's kind of that has that sort of fur, you know. Right. So you, you think that the old people are like, yeah, I know the tennis ball trick. Yeah, it's got the street credit kind of. Because otherwise there's just rubbers on the end. Is that make it like it means you move a bit faster because the tennis ball glides. Maybe the felt of the tennis ball is where it's at as well. And the silence, I think. A lot of old people don't like a lot of sounds. Yeah. You know, yeah, probably, and that's another thing. I think they're going to start selling old people like soundproof areas and like soundproofing. Like, um, I mean, it's just crazy, man. Soundproofing and moats, yeah, that's what you reckon. I got to see one of these moat ads, yeah, see if oh. you can pull one up on a house, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, I'm down, dude. And this was this was in uh, they, I know they had some near Birmingham when I was in college, but. See what you what did you there, study? Man. I don't know, man. I think electricity. Uh, you study electricity? No, uh, communications. Uh, home moats in America. These are British moats you're showing us. Yeah, these, these are, are British, These man. are old. These are castle moats. Everyone knows about them. I want to... I want Yeah, do t- recent... I want a 2018 <laughs> yeah. moat. Residential Come moat. On, Nick, no. 2018 recent residential moat. moat. God, this guy, man. You know, he was a premature baby. You know, yeah, yeah, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Do recent moats, please, Nick. There's one. Is that one? Yeah, there's one right there. <laughs> that's Britain, man. I think <laughs> Dude, look- that's your Google search term, man. Recent oh, moats, yeah, USA. Recent. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Man. <laughs> like, that's all you got to do. Unbelievable. It's hard to get good help yeah. around here. There's one. There's one. There's a moat. They look quite pretty. Yeah, that's a now that's a nice one. That's a rich guy. That's a guy that's, that's fucking a, young girls. That's, that's, you that's the swimming. That's a swimming moat. Yeah. What do you have? Do you have a nice place here now? What do you? Where do you I keep got, a place? I got, I got a house in suburbia. I, I live in suburbia now. But I got a nice house. I used to live in the hills, but I wanted to have a place where my kid could ride his bike, and uh, you know, so I I live in the in the flats now in the valley and uh, near my kid's school. Yeah. And, uh, less than half a mile away from his mother. 
And so everyone's very close. And, and is that still a marriage? Are you still married or no? No, no, no. Yeah. We were never married. Right. I've never, I've never been married. Did you, uh, when you go back to Australia for this tour, do you, does that feel like, what does that feel like? Does that feel kind of different than it's going on a different, like a, a tour in the US? Yeah, there... it feels a little different. It, it, it's, well, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing arenas, so that's different. Wow. I do theaters here in America for the most part. Yeah. You know? And um, so I'm doing arenas, which is is different. Also, I sort of Australia was the last place for me to crack. You know, I was working in Britain so long, and then I sort of I cracked Britain, then I cracked Canada, and then I cracked America, and then Australia was the last place. And so, you know, but I'm way more popular there than I am anywhere else now. Yeah. So I, you know, and that sort of happened. I, I just, I, I guess I have to thank the internet because it wasn't anything that, uh, there wasn't any big move to do that. You know? And are, are Australians hard to please? Is there a reason why it took them so long to come come along? No, I just think that, that you, you're, you sort of, you see what you want, you know, like up until 10 years ago, YouTube wasn't what it is now, you know. Right. And... People were just watching whatever we were given on the TV. Yeah. Um, before Netflix was showing specials, like, you know, I did an HBO special uh, eight, nine years ago. It didn't really reach Australia. It never got aired in Australia. It was aired in HBO here. I think the British Comedy Central bought it. Yeah. But if it did get aired in Australia, I didn't know about it. So no one saw that special in Australia. But then Netflix was like a big thing where you, you record something and then it comes out straight away. So my last three specials have been on Netflix and it's probably got a lot more to do with that. I yeah. Think. But I, I, what I do enjoy is when I first came to America, um, some comics were a bit skeptical of me. Um, I heard, I heard some snide comments about me being uh, that it was all the accent, mm -hmm. and it was just saying "cunt" a lot. Well, some people think it's a fake accent. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so they go, they think it was the accent that. that so I, I take a level of pride knowing that I sell so many tickets in Australia where the accent isn't charming at all. It's exactly the same as everyone else's. So, oh, that's true, huh? So it can't be the accent, can it? They don't know it's the accent. That, in the accent's not, it's not a big trick to them. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any little trick. That, so you don't sound different there no in fact now because i lived so long in the uk that my accent's got a little hint of british and i don't think i got any american in me but i do have hints of british overtones in and me does accent. that piss you off a little um not really I, I like the brits i think they're a cool bunch and i just live there in my 20s and I, I think i still primarily sound australian i don't think any british person's listening to this thinking that i sound like i'm english but when i go back to australia I come from a very working class family and everyone's like, oh, someone speaks like the queen. Hey, <laughs> look at this fella. Hey, someone's a bit fancy. <laughs> you know. Someone's got a recent moat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone's got one of those new moats. <laughs> stopping people, kitting in there, probably get cauldron <laughs> on the fence. Um, do you like Billy Idol? That's a weird question. Uh, I don't dislike Billy Idol. I like him. I think if Billy Idol was in concert and it was it was like one of those like eighties fucking package things, Billy Idol would be one of the people I'd be looking forward to seeing. Yeah, and I like how and this shows how old I am. But I remember, I remember when the Wedding Singer came out, we were like, "Geez, he's aged well." Yeah. Then he would have been fifty, and the Wedding Singer's got to be fifteen years old yeah. now. Oh yeah, so he's got to be pretty. Is he seventy? He, yeah, I think he's maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. They kind of stopped putting their age out. Rockers do it like about 60, I think. Yeah. But he, I saw him about a year ago and it was great. I saw him with Morrissey who fucking, God, was the worst, but. He's a boring, isn't Just bore, Jesus, Boring. We, we know you've got new songs and you're just drab and boring. Billy, he, Billy's 62. Billy's 62. <sighs> That's, I don't believe that, Hey, But I, <laughs> he looked awesome, man, and he was rocking, bro. He was rocking. Yeah, I look. You just for white wedding alone, you go yeah. all right. Or um, yeah. What's that other song of his that I really love? Uh, Hot in the city. Um, that always reminds me of the movie Big. Last night a little angel. Yeah. What's that one? Came dancing through my door. Yeah, I know the song. I'm trying to remember. With the rebel, yeah. Rebel, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rebel, yeah. That was awesome, man. Have you gotten to meet one of your idols? I got to meet Paul McCartney once. That was cool. Um. Uh, that was just, he was just at the improv and I, I think a lot of comics are that story because he hung out at the improv for a while. Yeah. And Brad Pitt, I know you got to I meet. know Brad Pitt. Well, I wouldn't say Brad Pitt's a hero because if I was an actor, maybe, but like. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm good friends with Russell Crowe. I've been friends with him for about, I don't know, five, a few years now. Oh, wow. A few years now. And, and we, we hang out together and, uh, he's a real good dude and, and Brad's just the sweetest bloke ever and helped out and was on my TV show and, you know, I think, but. 
like as as for heroes, like, when I when I recorded my last special, I got a stage and Chris Rock was in the dressing room. That was pretty cool, and that was like a hero type That's thing. Cool. Got to meet Eddie Murphy at a birthday party. Wow. Really? Was it a children's party or an adult? It was um, It was James Packer's birthday party. I do a routine on this, but James Packer, who is half uh, ha- half of the production company, Rat Pack, mm-hmm. um, and owns all the casinos in Macau. He's a, a billionaire, but he was at the time was engaged to Mariah Carey, and Mariah Carey threw him a birthday party, and I was the hired help, and Eddie Murphy was one. It was just a dinner party. Eddie Murphy was at the dinner party. And you were performing? I was doing stand-up for... 20 people no. and my childhood hero was sitting there and the do you feel at that point like does it take you out of like oh i'm like a you know a good comedian at that point and you're just like oh, does oh it put no you no, in no. A- it puts you right back to the early days of gigs yes, like that's you, 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 re- yeah. you regress back into like oh god i can't do Fuck. this what am i doing what am i doing i'm just dinner help yeah yeah because no microphone just standing there at the end of the table no. telling jokes to people who didn't expect you to be there it's it's suicide yeah, it's it's a terrible experience. The- but I did it with the express thought that this could be a weird story, and it turned out to be even weirder than I thought it would be. Yeah. But I I did it like sometimes, especially since you know I I've always told stories in my stand up, and then I was at that stage I was in a relationship with my ch- son's mother, and so all like one night stand stories and drug stories like were out the window. You know what I mean? So then I was like, where do you find these experiences? I think if it wasn't for my son, I wouldn't have written my gun control routine because I was just running out of things to say. To say, yeah. <laughs> so I st- for the first time in my life, I started talking about the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I remember like, if someone goes, Mariah Carey wants to book you for a party, I remember thinking, all right, I should do this because this could be weird. Did party you think you might have a chance to hook up with her? Honestly, no, no, like no, somewhere no, in your head? No, no, no. Really? No. I would she, think that. She was booking me because her, she was engaged to a guy who was a fan. Like, she wasn't a fan. Oh, yeah. I was the birthday gift for her fiance. There was no party. Part of me that thought I'll hook up with Mariah Carey. But did you think they'd hire you to do some late night activity or something? Because rich people can get like that, you know? No, no, I didn't. I didn't think that they wanted me to do anything like that. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't in their sights for that. I would have been up for it, but I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get an offer. Have you ever had a like you know be uh, you know we can take this out. Have you ever been in a place where you had to be sexual in front of some other people that were watching? I've been involved in an orgy. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, I would very... get scared of that. I think you it never, makes me nervous. You never been in a threesome? Uh, I, was, I was in a threesome one time in Indiana, and that made me pretty nervous. So you've done it. Yeah, I've, I've been in. I've been in maybe five or six threesomes in an, an orgy. Do you get the hang of it or something after a while? I think I've done two of them where I've done a good where I'm like, this is everyone's simpatico here, and we're all getting along and yeah there's nothing worse than being the the third wheel of the orgy yeah the cold yeah, guy yeah 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 where it's like where it's like your girl just wanted to shag another girl who she liked and then you're just sort of off to the side like that episode in friends you yeah. know i've been that guy yeah i've been i i yeah i've been in an orgy where uh where where the other two guys in, it was like four girls and three guys oh no, there was other guys in there yeah yeah but this whoa, was four, whoa. four guys and build the mo baby four, <laughs> yeah four four girls three guys i think yeah but I, I remember the other two guys at one stage and this is many did they know you were jim jeffries or not yeah no they met mate i organized everything i met <laughs> oh, it, I, I met everyone at the comedy club <laughs> I was good, right? I got it all set up. But then what happened was I was in my early 20s. The other, the other guy was a comedy promoter and two of the girls were his friends. And then um, uh, two of the other girls were just girls we met and they were both friends. And then the girl, you got to let the girls decide. You don't, yes. you don't say, this is what we're doing. It's got to be, you can drop a joke in or something. I mean, eventually they've got to be the decision makers in the whole thing. Yeah. And then we're like, okay, so then he's, the promoter had a mate there and he was really, really good looking. Oh. And the promoter was this really buff sort of black guy, right, with a big dong on him. Right? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And he was good looking too. Oh, wow. And then I was who everyone was trying to hang out with because I was funny. But then we all got naked and I became like the least popular person in the room, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And so then like... The You're audience, like the waiter. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting people <laughs> drinks and... Trying to keep the the atmosphere light, <laughs> changing the uh, thermostat. Right, right. <laughs> anyway, then eventually, but this oh. is this is this is me. My twi- probably not now, but I mean, I mean, everyone had come a few times, and the girls wanted to keep going, and I was the only one who could still get an erection. Oh, like wow. you've never seen him work more furiously on the other two dicks. Like surely this one still works, and 
And I just sat in the corner. Well, when you're done with those ones, yeah. there's still one open. <laughs> That's awesome. Way to work in overtime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Patriot with Mel Gibson, kind of. That's pretty cool, man. I never told that story. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, one time I got caught up with these girls from Indiana, but they didn't know each other, right? And so... And it was like kind of a hurried experience because I had to go to the airport and like, yeah, that's w- weird when everybody's strangers. Yeah, that I mean, been 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 there. And I was trying to like introduce these girls. Like literally, we had like nine minutes to make it all happen. So it was like trying to have sex and you know, kind of introduce these girls. You know, do to small talk. Other, yeah, at the yeah. same time, like oh, so you know, like I was literally having sex. I remember me like oh, so. You know, if you guys, you know, do you guys go to the same, you know, gym or anything, you know, like just, it was very bizarre. And one of the girls kind of looked a little bit, um, like, you know, like somebody that used to do weightlifting, like in the circus. Remember those people that were real strong kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. she was very, very barrel chested. Yeah. Polish. Like she would hold a bar that said 100 on it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like she had a curly mustache <laughs> and, a, and a shaved head. Was wearing stripy fucking pajamas. <laughs> yeah, she definitely, uh, you know, had operated a train, you know, like an actual cold, like, choo that, That's train. the thing is, like, like you look at those old things with weights and there's like, we'll put the weight in the end, we'll just make them like spheres. Yeah. We'll make them like cir- like balls, <laughs> balls of weight. No one, no one, like, how long did it take for people to figure out we can make these into discs? Smaller. Yeah, and it won't it roll used to, in It weird. used to be the look of it. That's mm. why, I guess, you wanted to see somebody look like they were doing something I was, talk- I was talking to my friend Forrest the other day about- Yeah, Forrest. Forrest Shaw. Forrest Shaw. Great who, who opens up for me everywhere and is coming to Australia with me and, wow. to, and to Asia to do all these gigs. Um, we're talking about, we're talking to a younger comic who's staying at my house at the moment from Australia called Amos Gill, and he couldn't remember a time when there wasn't cup holders in the cinema. And we were like, no, 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 no. You used to have your soda yeah. and just put it on the floor. Yeah. Hey, baseball games, everything, put it on the floor. Like, like how the first time you saw a circle at the end of your armrest, didn't you just go, All right, we've done it, we've cracked it, world. This is it, <laughs> we've cracked it. And you're sitting in cars, yeah, just that was with, our internet with drinks, drinks between your legs, yes. driving. The first person to go, like, it's so close to the wheel, our first invention, <laughs> it's so close to the wheel, and then it's like cup holders on the end of things, like, we were morons, yeah, also wheels on suitcases. Yeah. People carrying bags. Like we we <laughs> invent, like carrying bags. You d- my dad would have like two bags and another bag wedged yeah. under his arm and be waddling in. And my mum would be hurting me and my brothers. And not sweating as much either. Remember like back then, you never, it wasn't now. Everybody's so sweaty and they're not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. well, there's definitely, <laughs> that just happens. It's yeah. not moving. Because I like, I understand like real, the real fat people of this world. I want to be one. Yeah. I, I, if it wasn't for the health problems and just looking gross, I I would I, I would love just to eat whatever the fuck I want and not move. I don't want to move. Do you think in the future, like where like where do you see us kind of going in the future? Like, do you think we'll be leaving our homes as much, or do you think like people are locking in so much right now that I think I think we'll be getting a pill that just fucking makes sure that anything can pass through you and you can eat as much as you want. That's the big that's the big revolution of mankind. Just eating whatever the fuck you want, and then I don't th- about mo- about moving and traveling and stuff like that. I don't know. I I've traveled so much in my life that I don't need to travel anymore. I don't need to see anywhere else in the world. But I think for everybody else, I think it's important to see the world. It it, it gives you a better view of uh, of who you should be and how you should treat others and how some other countries are doing it better than you and how lucky you are to live here and all that type of stuff. It's good to experience the world, and you should you should do it when you're young. I think. Yeah. I think you should do it when you're young and carefree and you can fucking shag and get drunk and be stay at a hostel. And stay in a hostel. You should do it then. Now, I luckily didn't have to do any of the hostel stuff because I moved to England and then I got to travel through the job. So even when I wasn't earning much money, the hotels were always good. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you know, I'd go do. Because of work, you I'd mean? I'd go do Dubai or Asia or something like the gigs were booked out of Britain. They'd be paying me four hundred dollars for the gig, which yeah. you know, after all that travel. But I'd get the free trip and I'd get the five star hotel, so it made it worthwhile. But after I did it a couple of times, I didn't need to do it again. Right. Yeah. Is there a place that you still go that, uh, like internationally, you're like, oh, that's a place that I'm definitely going all the time. I still got a. I still perform in Holland about once a year. Wow. I do like a little, like little, like a five thousand seat sort of arena. Tom Rhodes loves uh, that area over there. Yeah, yeah, he lives over there. Like, yeah, and so. So I go do do Holland. I can still sell tickets in Holland all the time when I go there, 
And I still love to do London whenever I can. I, you know, I would do London every week if I could. It's my favorite really? place. Really? Yeah, my favorite place. Well, is, there audience, is there something special about the audience over there? People always tell me. I get a huge response from Australians like on social media and stuff like that. I, They've I, been so like welcoming. But what about the UK? Is there something? I think for the UK for me personally because it feels like um, a tangible goal that I achieved because I started out there in comedy clubs and then to move into like bigger rooms and then to play – the rooms that I used to see bands in concert, you know what I mean? It was just something that was really cool. And it's, I just, I just know London top to bottom. I know where to hang out in the seedy club if you want a cheap beer. And I know where the fancy places are and everything in between. It's just, it feels very much like home to me, London, you know? Yeah. But I just became an American citizen. So, wow. Um, uh, yeah, my, my episode tonight, when's this airing? Uh, next Thursday. Next Thursday. Well, the episode's already aired. I get uh, I get sworn in by Eric Garcetti. Eric Garcetti, the mayor of um, oh, the mayor. was he the coach of? No, the mayor. The mayor. mayor the coach of the Heat. The mayor of Los Angeles. Mayor of Los Angeles. Yeah. The, the honorable Eric Garcetti. I believe by the time we are done with this podcast comes out, maybe in a week's time, he will announce that he's running for president. That wow. is that is my belief. And what what vibe did you get from him meeting him? Well, I said to him, I said, are you going to run for president? Because I knew what he was talking about. And he goes, oh, I'll ha- I'll, uh, I have to decide in the next three weeks. And then he goes, but someone's got to get rid of this guy. And then he winked at me. Wow. For uh, what? About getting rid of Trump. Oh. And I was like. I was like, damn, so that guy's I think, wild. So I think, all right, this guy's going to go. Very charming. I wagered on him to get the DNC nomination at 50 to 1. Did you? Or 25 to 1. 25 to 1, yep. And how long ago did you do that? Uh, about four or five months. Yeah, all right. So I think now you'd be looking ten to one. Mm-hmm. Wow, the odds would have dropped. Out. I got, I got value. Would you ever? Uh, do you start to thinking like a, you know, since like you said, I mean that you know this is kind of your first special where it's like a, where you things weren't about, um, you know, as much stories and stuff like that. Well, it's this last getting... special I didn't mention politics at all. I mentioned it all in the other ones. This one, is, this last special, I did go back to, to mm. stories and stuff because I had the separation. Um, from my child's mother and, and all the moving and all that type of stuff and becoming a single dad. So I had a lot of stories like that. But the two specials before that were a lot more political and stuff because I was just living family life, you know. I didn't have a lot of stuff going on besides comedy or whatever. And and I did sort of get interested more in politics and, you know, like the, the gun control routine is really why I have a TV show. I think that people responded to that that much. That I think I think what I one thing that I do well in stand-up that they're trying to put onto television is I, I I think I dumb down difficult subjects quite well. Mm. And, and that's not through any trick. I'm, right. just, I'm just a fucking simple yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but a lot of people need, they just need it in a way where they can consume it. I, I think I give palatable um, arguments. Yeah. Mm. Do you think, so if not guns, like what weapons should everybody have that you think would be fair? Well, I don't look. I'm me personally. You know, I, I. I mean, everybody's got one gun. Everyone's got one. Do they? I don't know. I think so. Do you have one? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so not I everyone. Not everyone. He's, he's waiting for that Garcetti money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Garcetti Glock. That'd be so great. You win money on him being elected, and you get a gun and commit a crime, dude. Yeah. <laughs> At least two out of three. Yeah. So when when will you know? By when when will they when will they announce that? I, I don't know. I don't follow it closely enough, like the all the pre stuff. Where, yeah. how, where did you find gambling on that? Uh, just it? buddies a bookie, and it was on there. Yeah. Odds aren't on there anymore. But I bet the Rock would run for office. I bet two hundred to one that the Rock would run for office about a year and a half ago. I think I think uh, twenty twenty four he does it. Yeah. Could happen. Not done it yet. Um, do you guys study? Okay, so then what are the odds on him winning? Uh, it's probably about almost double that because Trump, Trump is like. Uh, he's about fifty fifty. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you're more that like you became like more like a like? Do you feel like you fall like more like as a Republican or a Democrat? Um, or do you feel like I, you just have your own I, ideas? I'm a I'm a socialist because I grew up in socialist countries, so I believe in healthcare for all and housing for all, and uh, I believe uh, there shouldn't be homeless people on the streets. I believe that that, that, that problem should be taken yeah. care of. Um, so Sad. so I because of my socialist views i would lean more towards being a democrat but i you know i would have probably been closer to what a financial republican when i was australian and when i was british than this but like so my views on guns 
and uh, my views on abortion and um, gay rights mean that I'm a Democrat. But if you take those fundamental things out, I'm more for smaller government and all that type of stuff. So yeah. I have I have some I have uh, Democrat opinions with some some Republican ideals or the other way around. Yeah. It's almost think, like there shouldn't be only two choices. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's what Ari Shafir was saying recently. You know Ari? Yes. Um, he was saying recently that if if 5% of the population votes for a third party, then that party gets equal funding as the other two parties get. Mm, mm. And so that that would start to at least, you know, lead us in that direction because then a, that party would start to have money yeah. to be able to uh, to put a name out there. And I thought that well, was really I, interesting. Well, they, they, there was a third party in Britain a while back and then they had to... Two of the parties had to merge, and that third party just seemed to be pushed out, you know? Yeah. The Lib Dems. It's going to get wicked, man. I, look, I think it's all going to end up in WWE. It's all going to end up in the <laughs> ring. Doesn't it feel like that a little bit? Well, it does, because it's all a circus now. But I feel like they were probably saying that in the 1960s. Yeah. You know, they're probably probably in the 1960s, when they were with Kennedy and Nixon, they are going, this is a debate on television. <laughs> yeah. It's just become a circus now. That was the first time there was a televised debate. And, and they then he shot thought, that family. They shot that whole family. Kennedy's. Ken who, who's they? Whoever did it, man. You know, people it's in not, Dallas. It's not the one person, but a few But they people. shot Bobby too, right? They did, yeah. They shot him, yeah. Two. I mean, if two of the brothers get gunned down, two that's... Two of the brothers get gunned that's down. That's like the Earps. That hasn't happened since the Earps, I don't think. Yeah, they. the Kennedys, uh, they're a funny bunch. They keep trying to do the one thing that kills them. Yeah. <laughs> they keep going, oh, let's go back and do that occupation that kills us. So, like, like the two of the brothers died, and then the dad tries to push the third son into it. And, like, he kills a bird in the river. Yeah. Like, he drives a car off in the river and kills Oh, yeah. I know I know her her son is a comedian. Is he? Or her, yeah, her cousin is a comedian, that girl's cousin. Right. So, th this guy, is it Ted, is it? Teddy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Teddy. Teddy. Bobby Jr. No. What are we looking for? The person who killed someone? Yeah, Markle. It, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was. Um, he, yeah, he, I think it was Ted. Ted, right? So Ted. There's a movie about it, right? But Ted drives a, a car off the bridge while he's drunk into the river. Girl dies. He gets out of the car. Just assume she's dead. Turns out she was living in there for like twelve hours or something. So crazy. Scratching the roof. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. so, but they're like, oh, you'll never be president now, Teddy. And it's like, why the fuck? <laughs> he, both of his brothers have been already shot and killed at that point. Like, who the fuck is going, oh, I'll do that job, Dad? Like, like it's sooner or later. I know you shouldn't give in to fear. You shouldn't give in to it. But sooner or later, the dad must have gone. Yeah, okay. All right. Like, the dad, by this stage, he was like, he was like a vegetable. He was yeah. just like, Ugh. Get in there. Run and run. We're presidents. <laughs> and it's like, fuck you, Dad. He's probably giving his daughter a buzz cut and going to send her in the office, man. Yeah, yeah. So Do you think we'll have a lesbian president in our lifetime or not? Um, In our lifetime. A hot one. No, no. no yeah. No, no. I don't I think don't, so. No, either. I don't think we'll have a hot lesbian in charge of anything within our <laughs> yeah, lifetime. That's true. They're, that's they're true. too busy making me do chores for them. <laughs> no, yeah. You know what I mean? To do anything like that, I'll just pay buy them houses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but I I do we think I will I think do, will we have a gay president within my lifetime? I don't believe so. I know we've already got gay we got a gay governor in one state just got voted in correct. We had a gay um And a lot of these dudes are being secretly gay and doing stuff. Oh everybody's look, done something. You're telling me Mike Pence hasn't been in some pray the gay away conversion. Of course. Listening to fucking Amy Mann and getting of beaten. Of course <laughs> he's been in some pray the gay away thing. You can just see it. You allegedly. Know. I had a thing where I got beat by two. They have this. They used to have this thing downtown. These two Vietnamese guys for seventy bucks would fuck you up. You know, they put you in this outfit, and these guys would fuck you up. And for seventy bucks, it sounds like quite the bargain. Why would you pay that? Was this to stop you being gay? No, no, no. This doesn't do that. I don't think. I mean, I didn't. I, I wasn't. I feel like it just give me an erection. That, two well, that's what happened to me one time. Yeah, yeah, I fucking yeah. came during it, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't expect that. And I and I've never been gay. I mean, I you know, like I had. Some dude paid me like maybe forty bucks to look at his asshole once when I was a kid, but that's not. I don't know what no, that, that is. That's art. Gay. That make you that's gay. art. But what happened? You're a guy with forty bucks. Yeah, entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, but the thing was, what I'm saying was, I didn't expect to get like a a feeling out of that that was kind of that live and be up sexually. Mm. You know, like sometimes you don't know where you're gonna get a feeling that's gonna live. You really did. You really did. You you pulling my leg? No, I'm not pulling your leg. So you paid. 
Two Asian blokes to beat you up? Vietnamese. Yeah, Vietnamese. Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, they would fuck you up and they put you in the suit and it was kind of like a... What's this suit? Like kind of a... You ever seen a dog bite suit? Pull up a, a dog oh, bite like, suit. Oh, like, okay, like, uh, like a sumo... I know the dog yeah, bite yeah. suits, right? Yeah, but a nice one, not a sumo wrestler one. That one's for I know the. I know the one. I've been chased down by a dog in one of those outfits. Exactly like, when like you, that. When you visit the military, yeah. And these two guys would f- fucking start kicking you and beating you. Right, okay. So what's the point of that? To get the feeling of... It just made you feel like a man. Made you feel like a. It made something come out of you that made you feel. It made me feel strong. It made me feel some pain. It made me feel something. You know. Right. And six hundred fifty dollars for that suit too. So they had to get at least ten before they made their money back in that whole adventure. Yeah. I have six and or also, seven also friends that have done. The dry cleaning of the inside of the suit. Yeah. yeah. Are you a Republican? I'm just, I think I'm just I, going on the mullet. Are you a Republican? <laughs> no, I think when I was growing up, I was probably more of a. I guess I think I'm kind of the same as you. I yeah. think in some ways I've, I, I have some ideas, and some ways I have other ideas. You know, I, 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 you know, I liked John McCain. I'm not a big fan of Donald Trump. Yeah, you know what I mean. So there's there's people you can pick and choose through the party. That there's there's Democrats that I'm like. Ugh about as well you know what i mean yeah but oh, i yeah. i think i would i i i can vote now i think i will vote democrat yeah, yeah. i think i will so this i just i just feel like just for social issues i can't i couldn't be a republican for social issues yeah and did that start to change or anything when you had a family um no 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 i've always felt this way it probably strengthened my ideals but i i do believe we are in in danger of um of the, letting the left get carried away and us looking like whinging bitches you know what i mean like there's a lot of pussification of the left yeah that isn't really helping your cause if you were more moderate you could get more republicans and so it's like a it's like more. guys of my dad's generation you want to tell them hey being gay is all right gay people can get married and and it's taken them years they're on board now yeah they're like okay i get it all right, right? i yes, mean they are i get it it's so took, quit quit telling them yeah quit telling okay okay so you've got them on that they've all accepted it they're voting for gay people gay people can, and then and now you're like now here's a transsexual yeah. and it's like all right all right, all right calm down yeah. they just did the gay thing yeah. you know what i mean and they, if you don't like this transsexual <laughs> then you're a transphobic and then they're just feeling attacked they're like i've just gotten used to men kissing i've yeah. just gotten used to that and for years i was bigoted about it but i've come around yeah and so so for me it's like we have to grandfather some people in on their views agreed you know what i mean like like there's got to be okay uh this is bad that's bad but the people over 90 yeah right? people over 100 be racist yeah. All right. The, the, over the hundreds. Oh, you can. Uh, yeah. If you live through the Second World War and you can vividly remember it, right? then you deserve to have some views. I think. Yeah, you can have some views. <laughs> I think so. You can have some views. I'm not going to say you're right <laughs> or anything like that. But if you're over a hundred, I'm not going to try to change it. Yeah, you're just like a book almost. That's the thing. So I'm giving hundred year olds racism. Okay. Right? There can be racism. That's fair. Go to town both both ways. Right? Yeah. Uh, people over eighty. I'm giving you. I'm giving you homophobia. Yeah. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. It's been a while. You were taught at school that it was a mental. You were taught at school that it was a mental illness. Yeah. Right. So I'm gonna give you that. Right? And people said you shouldn't do it when you're growing up. So it was like almost yeah. Even your parents and everybody was like probably skewing you away from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and so yeah. So and it wasn't so successful. And the, the guys you did know were closeted and all those. Secrets. So so you didn't really know about this world. And so I'm I'm giving you over eighties. I'm giving yeah. homophobia. Over seventies, no more homophobia. You can't be homophobic anymore because you're mm. my parents' age, and you. I remember growing up with you, and Would it, the world wasn't like that. And the eighties was fabulous, and the thing, you know what I mean? Like everything was fine. Right, right? I agree. But if you're in a we, if you have a couple conditions, though, if something happened to you, if you're, you know, maybe every now and then there'd be an ex- there'd be an, uh, a rarity. Well, yeah, no, of course. The, okay. There's exceptions to every okay, rule. Okay, good. Exceptions to every But 70. Now, over, okay. s- over 70, you can be transphobic. I've decided that's it, right? Over 70? Yeah, 70 and over, you can be anti-trans because that one's a big leap for some of them. Now, 70 is a... Trans is a big leap because it's starting to just, like you said, just fucking bother people. It's just like you're not... You're it's just saying a, it's, this it's to bother people. It's just getting... Nor- for me and you, it's fine. It yeah. doesn't, and we know comedy people. I know transsexuals. Yeah. And there's no issue with it whatsoever. But the, 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 the generation before that, 
that was I know gay people and the generations before that was I know black people. Yeah. They're all right, right? So we, we're working our way through. Now, anyone 70 or under, you don't have an excuse for anything. If you're in your 60s and below, you, you have to sort of be tolerant of people and you have to get along. I'm, I'm not giving you any more isms. You, uh, uh, you can be anti-fat. Right. If you're in your 60s, you can get you, you can fat shame. Yeah. Fat shame. Okay. Yeah. Over, just... over 50s, you can slut shame. Yeah. You can still be a little bit like, ah, oh, I worked all my life and she sat at home. Fuck this person. Yeah. Yeah. Over, and then 40 down, my generation, we're, no more excuses. No more excuses. No more excuses. It's all over. But they'll find something else. They'll find something else that we, that we think's normal. Yeah. That we that we think's not normal anymore. You know what I mean? That'll be normalized. I don't know what it is. And yeah, it's everything now. It's like, uh, but I, I agree with you on the, the part where it's like, I agree with you on all of that. And I agree with you on the part where it's like, yeah, they just keep finding something else. It's like a lot of people just thought of, okay, trans, that's that. And those types of, um, uh, those people, you know, people that are trans or people mm. that have different, you know, have sex changes and, um, you know, not sure what sex they're in. Um, people just kind of lumped that in with gay sometimes, I think, in their yeah. mind as they learn to accept it. Yes. So then people started, like, getting specific on the word. It's like, yes, it's wrong maybe to call somebody that's trans if you call them gay, but it's like fucking... Somebody can't spend their whole day at well, home sex, studying your, up on what is the okay thing to say. Your sexual identity and sexual preference are two different things. And I, I get that. And I understand how it can be. But like now I think it's in Canada, there's over 20 different names for... 70. Pre, uh, 70, is it? Mm -hmm. 70 names. for. Pre, and now the thing is, I don't give for a what, fuck. what, French fries? No, <laughs> but, but this is the thing is, I don't give a fuck. I, yeah. don't give, you, I, you, I will call you whatever you want to be called. Yeah. Or whatever you want to be called. I don't, I don't care. But I also understand the people who are like, but why should I have to do that? And the answer is, what does it matter? Right. Just call them what they fucking want. But I also understand the argument. Yeah. Why should I? So you've got your Jordan Petersons in this world who I sat down and found him to be fairly reasonable sort of fella. I did yeah, a, he was in here. I, I, did, a, I did a section with, with Jordan where I, 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 I about the, it, should a um, person be, be able to deny uh, baking a cake for a gay couple, right? Right. And he goes, um, there's a difference between should and shouldn't. Uh, they they should be allowed not to do that. But is it right? I don't believe so, but they should be allowed not to do that. Right. And I go, should they allowed to be allowed to not bake a cake for a black couple? And he goes, you know what? Maybe you're, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe I was wrong on that one, right? Mm -hmm. And he admitted he was wrong right away. And what happened was... All, all the people who watch my show who are extreme lefts were, were just like, yeah, fucking suck that, you fucking dick. Jim Jeffries proved you wrong. And I was like, that was a cool bit of the conversation. Yeah. That was the bit where he actually conceded something. And then the people on the right started to attack me like, you're just trying to make him look like a fucking idiot. Fuck <laughs> you. I, I think both me and him had like a nice- Normal moment. A normal moment where we saw eye to eye on something. And the guys obviously- much more educated than me. He's, yeah, he's, he's a, a lot. He's a lot. You know what I mean. So, so for me to to win a little argument with a simple concept felt pretty good. You know, I won't lie to you. I was yeah. like, all right, that was cool. But, but it, I don't. I didn't do it. I didn't air it to make the guy look like an idiot. Yeah. And then people were started going, going. Um, you edited that down. And I, yeah, yeah. We we interviewed him for forty five minutes, and the piece was five minutes. Right. And he knew that as well. Yeah. He knew going, he knows how to play the game. He, yeah. He also is the type of bloke that he enjoys the controversy of the yes. people saying, oh, they edited you wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's his kick in life. That's what that's, he loves. He loves the debate. Yeah, yeah. He likes that whole thing. So I don't think it hurt him in any way. But I don't know how I got onto this. Well, I, I, I was about the 20 different names or the 70 you're telling me. I thought it was 20. When I did that interview, it was 20 or 30 or something. And see, a lot of voters will then say if there's some... And then a lot of, I feel like, Democratic candidates feel like they have to then support all of these agendas. Uh, you know, all of these, you know, that keep getting more specific and sometimes just bothersome to the point where it's not helpful it's just bothersome and a lot of a, a lot of people will then vote against them just because of that people just want to get through their fucking day yeah yeah, you yeah know? you're picking on one little tiny thing and you might be cutting off your nose to spite your face yeah. because you're so angry about abortion that you're gonna get your fucking taxes fucking taken off you and they might you know 
And most people don't care about those old topics. People go keep going back to these old topics and racism and all this. Like, dude, I grew up in Louisiana. My father's from Nicaragua, you know, my mother's from here. But I grew up in Louisiana and like there was racism both ways. Like I knew just as many black people that didn't like white people as vice versa. Do you think do you think the next step because I just watched that documentary on that girl who she thought she was black. What's her name? Rachel, Rachel Dozer. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel Dozer. After you see the documentary. Yeah. I don't agree with her doing it, but I get why she did it. I get where she's coming from. She was from an abusive family. They adopted a whole lot of black kids. She, they were very young. She sort of took the kids away, tried to give them a what you would call oh, a wow, black upbringing that. where they would know history and stuff like that. She got so entrenched into it and sort of started to feel like these were her real siblings rather than the family she came from. And so- Like a Stockholm syndrome almost yeah, or something. Yeah, and so she- I don't think she believed she was black, but she identified as black mm -hmm. in the same way that I don't think transsexual, transsexuals, they they know they have a penis. Even if they think they're a woman, they still know that the, what the history is. You know? Yeah. And I think that after watching, I was like, man, I don't know if that is much different. Like it, that, that might be the next thing that people get to decide what race they identify with. Yeah. I like that. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I think it's stupid, but... If you, it's a solution, If you though. said to me 20 years ago, 20, well, actually more than that, 25 years ago, you said to me that if someone's born a boy, should they be allowed to be a woman? I'd go, that's silly. You're a boy. Just be gay. What difference does it make? Yeah. I would never have thought, you know, when I was 15 or something. That that's somebody you wanted to go through the wishing well yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, who am I? Like, I'm comfortable being a fucking white Australian guy. I'm, I'm all right with heterosexual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but I, I don't like the fact that it's like we and i think this is why a lot of people have started to go to podcasts because people aren't allowed to talk anymore in a lot of uh, other circles and and a lot of that type of stuff has also been why you know people have just deserted the news and like trump keeps the news in business if it weren't for trump i think the news is dead those well, networks are they're, dead they're these 24 hour news channels it's they, bad they gotta fill them but no but the thing is 24 hours news is bad they used to fill them with smaller stories we used to get the story of there's a child missing in Kentucky. Yeah. And there always is. There's always a child. But we never get those stories now. I know. All we focus is in is these big picture things where the president says something stupid. I'd like smaller news. Yeah. I would like some fucking, uh, you know, even some some nice stories where a dog is, is raising a chicken. Yeah. And they're surfing. Yeah. I like to like that on the news. Or somebody like somebody had the biggest pumpkin. That was always a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Biggest pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i want to hear about the local farmers markets and what's going on in my town yeah how good are the chives locally um but it's but at the same time it's been it's been interesting like for for a lot of my life i felt like there was nothing socially that was making me feel any fucking vigor or anything you know like we, we had the uh you know the persian gulf war when i was in school mm. and you know that made you kind of feel like this american sort of vibe but outside of that there hasn't really been a lot of I, yeah, I don't know. With the Persian Gulf, the the war in Iraq, that didn't make you. Didn't yeah, you? I mean, I get. I think those kind of in my mind, I guess sort of ran together. Nine eleven didn't. Yeah, nine eleven sparked you up. Yeah, that, <laughs> that gave you the lift you needed. Nine eleven gave me the lift I needed. <laughs> but I think maybe like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess there just it felt like there hasn't been a lot in my life. Whereas I guess if I look back at You've other. Been low in your lifetime yeah i don't yeah, i didn't we're, notice we're, it we haven't not been at war that your entire what are you 30 38 38 okay so uh, so you're 38 in your lifetime you've had the gulf war the war in iraq the war in afghanistan you've had uh pro the berlin wall has come down you have had the market crashes of fucking epic proportions, the biggest since the depression. Yeah. You have had the. You have seen the first black president. Yeah. You have seen that the falling awesome. of the twin towers. Yeah. Right. You're right. Maybe You've I'm fucking seen greedy. Some shit, man. <laughs> Maybe I'm just because you haven't seen World War Two or a real good assassination. Yeah. You're like you haven't seen a real good assassination. Like. A, a, yeah, I haven't seen anything like that. I saw a guy get shot off a of Claiborne one time in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. Yeah, well, but I haven't seen anything big. You know. No, I, I I went out I went out to Iraq and Afghanistan at the height of the war. It was it was no fucking bullshit, man. It was going down. Yeah. Yeah, well, we were being shot at in helicopters flying to gigs. Wow. Yeah. You know, so it was uh it was something. Yeah, it was something. Um, we saw the death of Saddam Hussein. Yeah. We saw we saw the rise of North Korea. Yeah, that's true. That you've guy's pretty seen wild. Some shit. You've seen Brexit? 
You were around for Brexit. Yeah, that seemed pretty crazy, huh? I wish I'd have been over there. No, I was over there when it happened. Were you really? I was in, in the country when it happened. Was it exciting? No one knew. They still don't know. It, it's like the people who did it, when, when they got their vote through and they won, they went, well, we're, I've done what I need to do. I'd like to retire now. And it's like, you're meant to be steering the ship now, cunt. You have to do something. Yeah. Because they don't know if they have to bring all the people back from Europe, that all the English people who live oh, in wow. fucking Spain and France and all that type of stuff, whether they're being kicked out or they have to get rid of the Europeans who already live in Britain. So you've got to get rid of all the nurses and staff that work in the NHS, which is like 80% people from the um, Europe. But they're not going to be able to pull that off, are they? No, I think what they're doing, they're doing a moving forward. Mm -hmm. I think they're leaving everyone where they are because... I think the only thing that's really changing is the lines at the airport, which they're idiots. They used to be at Brexit. They used to be in the uh, the, the EU and they have to fly through. Any, anywhere they land in France, they fly through. Now they're going to have to join the line with me. No. Yeah, the Australians and all that. No, 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 no. Idiots. It's going to be longer. Idiots. Idiots. They should have never left. Yeah. But there's, you know, there's people who, who think that they're they're better on trade or something like that. They already, they already had. The, they were the only people in the European Union with different currency. Yeah, they had the pound. Everyone else was on the euro, and now it's just. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do now. It's Is like, it more exciting for sports though? You think because everybody's going to want to beat them now. Everyone always the, the the Brits are notoriously bad winners. Yeah, the bad sports. Oh yeah, they they beat they beat well they beat Sweden. half the world. They beat Sweden in the World Cup, and then when they win, and they went in and kicked off a fucking IKEA store. Yeah. You won. Yeah. Like when they beat us in the cricket when I was out there in, the, in a tournament called the Ashes, which is like the big tournament that happens every few years, Australia versus England. And it's the only one that everyone cares about. And they won back the Ashes for the first time in like 30 years. They won it back. Mm. And I was out there. I would get booed all the way from Australia. Boo. Wow. They hated it. Yeah, they hated it. Oh, and they won. And so then I said, oh, I, said I, I, I said to the MC, I said, tell them I'm from New Zealand so I won't get booed. They go all the way from New Zealand, Jim Jeffries. I went up and did my seat, not getting booed. Wow. Happy days. And then halfway through, this big burly New Zealand fellow stands up in the middle of the room. He goes, he's lying. He's not from New Zealand. Because <laughs> we can tell the difference between our accents. Yeah. Right? He's not from New Zealand. He's an Australian. <laughs> and then the audience hated me even more because I was a lying Australian. Do you, uh, are Australians going to be upset that you're an American citizen now? I just posted it and some people, one guy wants a refund from my shows in Sydney. I'm still dual citizenship. Yeah. I just thought my life would be easier having two passports and be better that way. You know what I mean? But I mean, um, yeah, one guy, you're dead to me. Can I have a refund on my tickets? But it's like you're taking your talents elsewhere. I could see that a little bit. Like you're taking your talents elsewhere. You're taking your talents down to South Beach. You know, like when, well, when LeBron left Cleveland. <laughs> well, the thing is, the thing is, uh, the reality of it is when I was up and coming in Australia and even when I was selling... Big theatres, I wasn't really welcomed at the Melbourne Comedy Festival and I wasn't um, ever put on any TV shows in Australia. And mm -hmm. so I don't, I did it all by myself, uh, building up my Australian market and that type of stuff. And I didn't get help from any of those festival types mm. and they can go fucking suck my dick. Yeah. You know, like I still, I, I still love Australia, man. But like, but the promoters and that the, kind of bullshit. The, the promoters weren't very. There was almost a level of shame involving me because I, I was this sweary guy mm -hmm. that I don't give a fuck what you say. Biggest Australian comedian ever. Yeah. No one's ever like stand up wise. No one's ever come close to you Chris. Know. Chris Lilly, he's not stand up though. Chris Lilly's not a stand up, yeah. and and Paul Hogan's not a stand up, and you know I'm not saying the no, biggest comic a, talent, but for stand up right. comedy, no one's ever really cracked it. Yeah, you know. Gallipoli the, is the only thing I can think of after you, and that's not even a comedy. <laughs> that's a war movie, I think. Crocodile Dundee, <laughs> Young Einstein, <laughs> yeah, you're right. serious? You're right, man. Have you met Chris Lilly? No, but we've talked a few times on wow. on social media. I think I think the guy's a genius, but he's. He's now over. Career's over. Oh, he quit? No, 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 no. He no. passed away. No, no, no. The media has just decided that with all the blackface and all that stuff, because he does 
uh, yeah. an Asian face and black face and a Tongan character and all that type of stuff. Which may I say, the BBC, which is Australian funded programming, couldn't get enough of the guy. But now that now they've just dropped him, just gone. Oh That's no, a no, worst no! Thing I've his, ever heard. His, his, he's his, the best. Yeah, his humour is the problem <laughs> with things, and he's racist and that type of stuff. So. He can't get arrested in Australia right now, but HBO sort of dropped it as well because HBO kept on buying the new series yeah. and everyone just acknowledged that he was a comic genius and that he was really smart and now it's like, oh, no, no, he's comedy, he's racist. Well, we all watched it. When, when did this happen? Because in, in May, he had a ten, they announced a 10-part series from Netflix from him. Oh, they did? Oh, well, you see, Netflix might be back on, but Australian TV started going, you know That's what I mean? unbelievable. No, no, I, I Australian TV was at the start, he started doing articles about how he... Was what's wrong with comedy? I don't believe that. I think uh, I think he's very funny. I just watched uh, Summer Heights High is one of the best things that's ever been made. I just watched it this year for the first time. I just learned about it, and is I could not stop. It was the best thing I've ever seen next yeah, yeah. to like America's Most Wanted. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a fantastic comedy. Yeah, and just the the Mr. G character is yeah. one of the fun- <laughs> and the kid and like I grew up with kids like that man, the kid from Tonga and the, and, and and the, and the private school girl and all type oh, of stuff. Dick Dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he thinks his dad's always looking at his dick. Yeah, stop looking at my dick. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. It's so specific too. Yeah, yeah, no. And no. It, dude, it taught me so much about the. I learned about the culture sitting there watching. I bought into the fact that he was a Tongan. You know, like yes. And then they did the the thing. Well, the thing is, the the kids, you know, from Tongan stuff. Sometimes they hadn't done a lot of schooling before they get to Australia, so they are a bit more rough and tumble. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there is that that sort of trope, you know. But, um, so I'm trying, I'm trying not to sound bigger to you. No, but, it, but I thought it was, I didn't think, I just thought that it seemed, it introduced me to the fact that they even had those kids at yeah, these so we, schools. Yeah, so we have these islands all around Australia. And, um, yeah, it's like Hawaii. It's like a real far away Hawaii. Yeah, so we, we have, all the, have, you know, and so so often they come over to the mainland and, you know, they, they yeah. Yeah. Oh, some of the greatest uh, rugby players. Greatest rugby league players are all like from Tonga and, and um, uh, Samoa yeah. and all that type of stuff. And also, uh, you can fuck around all you want in a nightclub in LA and you'll get kicked out or whatever. But I tell you what, in Australia, we have the biggest doorman in the world. Wow, I bet. We have, we have some fucking men who will beat the living snot out of you at any, yeah. any club in Sydney. Any yeah. club in Sydney. Um, we have a couple of questions that came in from viewers that we're going to uh, um, get to real quick. Nick? I'm hey, happy about up? Chris Lee and in Netflix. That's exciting. Sorry. Yeah, that is awesome. Would Do you think you'd ever work on something with him? I would I would work with Chris Lee. Me too. Yeah, I would. I'm putting it out there, Chris. I'd work with you. Me too. And I could do something. I could do P- I, I'd probably P. I'd at least PA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll carry drinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet. It's a front pocket carry. You ever seen somebody and they can't read, can't even breathe? Whatever. What I'm talking about is the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is a way for you to carry things from your back of your pockets in the front of your pockets. A lot of times if you look at movies or drawings and stuff from the 1600s, you'll see people have wallets in the back of their pocket or they even have a big bag of money and a gun. Well, this is different. This is a Ridge wallet. You carry your credit cards and you carry your your license and the things that are most important to you and you keep it in the front of your pocket. It's that front pocket carry. They've been with us for a while and I use one myself. In fact, I got all of my stuff together right here on the Ridge. Visit RidgeWallet.com slash Theo and use code T-H-E-O at checkout for 10%. That's code T-H-E-O for 10% off at RidgeWallet.com slash Theo. Today's episode is also brought to you by Skillshare. A lot of times I don't have any skills. You know, like the other night I was looking, I was trying to get some ice cream, you know, frozen dairy. And I got some out of the freezer, but I couldn't get it out of the bucket because it was too hard. And I only had plastic silverware. So I gave up and put it back. But things like that can be different if you go to Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 20,000 classes in business, design, technology, and more. You can take classes in social media marketing, data science, mobile photography, creative writing, you name it, they got it. Some of the classes that this past weekend listeners have signed up for include Facebook ads for e-commerce, trap music production, and ultimate 
Ableton Live 10 Part 1, The Interface and the Basics. I don't even know what that is, but I could if I wanted to. At Skillshare.com, what is separating you from your dreams? Is it a skill? You can change that. Whether you're trying to deepen your skill set or just start a side hustle, you can get two months of Skillshare for just 99 cents. That's right. This past weekend, listeners, Skillshare is offering you two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for just 99 cents. If you're tired of your Instagram stories looking budget, looking mucky, then get on there for 99 cent. Take a class, how to make your social media pop. Bang, bang. Go to Skillshare.com slash Theo. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo to start your two months now. Hey, what's up, Theo? This is Dominic. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm a huge fan, but I got a question for Mr. Tim Jeffries, also a huge fan. I know you're upset or you're kind of bothered by Outback because they don't call the shrimp on their menu prawns because I don't know if that's what y'all call them. But I looked it up, and prawns and shrimp are two different types of, like, mm, animals. Oh they're they're separate is, species. They're true. similar looking, but they're they're super different. So that, that might be why. But anyways, my question is, how is your campaigning going to be the new voice of the Outback? Anyways, I hope you have a great day. Thank uh, you very much. Is that true? Okay. Yeah, I, I sent a few tweets out. I'd like to be the voiceover of the Outback Steakhouse. I don't, who else they getting? Just fucking give me the job. Yeah. Now, the difference between, <laughs> difference between a shrimp and a prawn, right? Okay, prawns are bigger, right? But when you say jumbo shrimp, that's a prawn. Yeah. So they're just fucking prawns. Right, and it seemed perverse too to be looking at shrimp that closely to me. Yeah, it's like one different fucking claw on them or something like that. But jumbo shrimp are prawns, and so we can have we can have little tiny prawns as well. But yes, I I don't like that the Outback Steakhouse has no Australian food on the menu. Yeah, none. They've got nothing. You think there'd be a meat pie or an Australian dessert or something? They've got nothing. Yeah. Blooming onions not Australian. Blooming onion is not <laughs> is not Australian. But I will say it on an advert. They don't out, even, Outback, what are you doing? Yeah. I'll do the adverts. They don't even call you Bogans when you run out on the tab either. That's the fucking No, they don't, they don't do shit. <laughs> yeah. They don't do shit. They don't do shit, man. I went into one in uh, Atlanta. We were doing a field piece. And it was oh. like on, in the suburbs of Atlanta. Oh. And, uh, That's way out there. And the lady thought... The lady thought that I was just doing the accent to take the piss because she never had an actual Australian come in there. Oh, yeah. And she thought, I, I go, you like my accent? She goes, I've heard better. <laughs> People have gone in there and done a different go at it. No, I saw they had a black lady call me the N word at a Waffle House one time in Atlanta, and I honestly thought it was kind of cool, actually. Why'd she call you that? I don't know. I think it was just like really hot weather. You got any more, Nick? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Wait, how would she do that? Really hot weather, and she go, "Hey, N word." Yeah, I, when she when I was ordering food, yeah, she was irritable. She was just, yeah. It didn't used to be, you know. Sometimes I think it was thrown around a little bit more in just conversation a little bit more before mm. it became such a an emblem of uh i mean it was always an emblem of taboo you know mm -hmm. but there was, <clears throat> there was like a you know if you would just use the soft a at the end people would use that a little bit more a little bit more socially sometimes i think know? even in the last 10 years it's happened yeah yeah it's different i think a lot's going on i love the idea that you said about um about people deciding what gender they are because there was a t i mean i i think especially m most white kids from the age 11 to probably 16 are black you know yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's true you yeah. know i've heard that in the, you know, i might be wrong but in, i've heard from some gay friends that this is a problem in the gay community at the moment is that because um everyone's coming out so young all they've got is a load of bottoms and they haven't got any tops. Oh, wow. Like, like they're losing the macho man fucking closeted guy who would just sneak in there in the bathroom and then fuck the shit out of you. Yeah. And a lot of them are attracted to that guy and that guy doesn't exist anymore because everyone's fabulous. Damn. Right. right. <laughs> they used to like the burly closeted ones. They yeah. Were, they were, they were, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. You got to have that hit man. Yeah. That you got to have that Paul that, Bunyan. Yeah. That was more of a fucking, you know, the broke back mountain sort of guy who really gives you going in a tent. You know, that guy's yeah. gone. You got to have that Paul Bunyan that sneaks in there and gives you that polar pop. 
Sounds like some opportunity for someone, someone who wants to clean up, but they're on the other side, but they're like... Yeah, if, yeah. You're, if you're a burly cowboy type... Fucking Lenny Dykstra, get your yeah, shit man. together. <laughs> get in there. You know? Yeah, get in there. <laughs> There's some great opportunities, I feel like. <laughs> and yeah, I think because it's become... Some gay men, it's become more of a... They want to be more like an ornament, like a Christmas ornament, than they want to... like. There's not as many you know, badass gay men kind of role models, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Except maybe Vin Diesel. Yeah, I've, I've heard the Vin Diesel rumors. Is that, is that... I mean, I think... And I don't mean in a negative way. I think he's a beautiful man. I don't care what he does. Or, you know, it's none of my business, but... Well, it's only alleged, but I, right. I don't have any... But we need some more gay men like that. We need a gay fucking I, Buster I Douglas. Think we, John Wayne. I think we yeah. need in our world... I think we need... Okay, so if one in ten men are gay, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot, right? But then in the acting world... It turns out there's like one in thirty. Yeah, the stats don't fucking add up, and right. there's and and guys are attracted to that industry, right? I studied musical theater at university. Oh yeah, it was all gay people, yeah. right? And so so I would like and same with the athletes. Everyone come out. That's the best thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Everyone just fucking have a come out day where we all fucking do it. Yeah, and then it's just like, oh, that guy. I never thought. You know, but I think people are worried still in acting. They're still worried about whether they can do action movie roles mm. or something like that. Or they can be a lead man because the people will know. Because, like, Rupert Everett gave it a go for a while. Yeah. For being gay. <laughs> he did it as a stunt. Did he? Right. 4.5% of US adults identify as LGDB. According LGBT. to Gallup. Yeah, that's yeah. 4.5 mm. people. At, but it's higher in men. Homosexuality is higher in men. I heard it was 10% of men. Wow. Do you think some of it, do you think that that's going to grow? Do you think some of it's just part of like uh, what's going on in us scientifically over time? Like it's just part of just some No, big I think there's always, there's already always been this many gay people uh, in the in the society. I think yeah. proportionally it's always been like this. I remember it was fun when I was young. They used to have gay men. They used to have a restaurant called Shoney's, you know, Shoney's Restaurant. Yeah. And it was like kind of like a, kind of like a nice kind of shithole kind of. Mm. And they used to have men would go back there and hook up and make out with each other. Yeah. Or, or behind the rest area by, by the interstate. Mm. And so it would be fun for us to go watch and like kind of, you know, you know, it Get was like- dicks a, out. <laughs> no, no, not like that, you know. <laughs> not aggressively watch, you know, just watch. Yeah. And But it was fun to go see that kind of stuff occur. You know, it was more of like a, a fun thing to see. And then now it's like- everybody's doing it sometimes you know it feels overdone sometimes yeah i i don't know if it's it's overdone if you want to see it you can see it it's you go down to west hollywood it's everywhere i i i i remember when i was a bartender in sydney when i was like 18 19 i always really enjoyed when gay people came into the bar because they tipped well yeah and, and they liven the joint up. They liven the joint up. Yeah, they're always f friendly and fucking happy to be out. And yeah, I always, I always liked having g gay clientele. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be tough to feel like you have to constant. Like, yeah, I wonder if there's this chip on some gay guy's shoulders that they feel like they have to constantly act more gay than they feel like they are you know and and I, i'm just saying this out of like a general question and you know place of vulnerability i don't have any idea you I know i think it must be wonderfully freeing to be like that it must be wonderful right yeah to be like so overtly gay in I, I think it would be a wonderful sensation yeah i think because then that's when you have really accepted who you are and you don't give a fuck what people think because you will get judged yeah there will be somebody who at some party who's bigoted who, who, who if you're so overtly gay will say something behind your back I mean, it must be wonderful to stop giving a fuck yeah i wish i could be myself and use my actual american accent but i've, I've, got, <laughs> I've gone too long now <laughs> let's get to another one nick yeah and i just want um the 10 percent uh oft cited from the Kinsey study in 1953 but right. uh, a lot of sources think that's like a, sh a little high a little high alright so 8 7 eight, yeah alright I'm fine with that yeah Here we I go. could go 7 yeah, I can go seven. We'll I, go think, seven. I think I'm 3% gay myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen a couple of things. You know? I th definitely have Look at the way I'm sitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But here's a question, though. Honestly, did you notice at all in the past maybe, you know, 20 years of your life that you used to sit more like this and now you sit more like this? Honestly. I used to sit more like this. Right. And then in older age, I've started to... Yeah. What is that, bro? That's starting to happen to it's me. It's starting to happen to me. where I, My father always sat like this. What he, is he, that? He got varicose veins in his legs and had to have a fucking surgery. So it's probably not probably not good for you. Yeah, you got to unsit like that, man. But I, I was never, I've never been a this guy. I've always been a sort of. 
Oh, that's insane, bro. The middle airplane guy? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't like people to do the man spread. That's not much though. I, I do this mostly still to this day. That fits you. Yeah, this most of this day. But every now and again I do the full cross now. I never cross left over right. You don't that's madness, right over left. Yeah. Yeah, that's much more comfortable. Yeah. Good radio. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, cool. Let's take uh, another shot here. That's a incentive for people who just listen to watch the YouTube. So here's the next question. See ya. What's up, big dog? Cam from Ohio, uh, currently living in Tennessee. Jim, Thanksgiving's coming up. Is your mother going to talk about having polio as much as she was always able to bring it up when you talked about it in your special? Oh, that's pretty See cool. See Love you, brother. Jim, you're hilarious. Keep doing your thing. Thank you. Love you guys so much. Talk to you later. Um, my mother, my mother. Does she have it? She had polio. You don't, you, you get cured from it. Oh, she yeah. beat it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no polio anymore in the free world. It's all eradicated. Oh, wow. Um, but like, That's great. It's like with these parents not vaccinating their kids, it could have a comeback one day. Do you think it was a necessary evil? No. No, polio, yeah. polio. Yeah. The world could have I done without... either, my bad. <laughs> the world could have done without polio. Yeah. What are, what are you, what are you, you know? I don't know. What is it, to wipe out young kids? I don't know how like, bad it is. What the fuck is wrong with you? No, it wasn't Bring a it necessary. Up, Bring it up. I don't know how bad it is. <laughs> it killed people. It killed children, man. Oh, man. No, I mean, I'm out. Yeah, my mother was bedridden for years. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Man. Years. Couldn't move. And ever since, uh, still her bones are a bit funny from the polio. I'm sorry. But I like, didn't know that. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm all right. I do jokes about my mother because my mother can no, bring- bring up a picture, Jack. Oh. <laughs> if you don't mind. I just don't want to have to read all of them. Images that. of people polio pitches. Yeah, okay, some. so your oh. legs go, and like little kids, and they go to school, and it was contagious, and they oh. have brackets on them, and yeah. their bones don't move again, and they have to learn how to walk Jesus. again. take it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not good. It's still, it's still in the third world. Yeah. It's not good. It's fucking contagious as well. Like it's, yeah, it's we got to beat it's, it. It's a kind of a thing, but we did beat it. <laughs> oh, damn. We okay, did. Okay. We, we can vaccinate against it. Okay, good. We have a vaccine. Okay, good. I good. can't catch polio. <laughs> okay, good, man. Right, um, sorry. Um, but my, so my mother probably, but now my mother has Parkinson's disease, oh. and she's so happy about it. Is she? Oh my god! It, it, she's already she's like seventy seven. By the time it's it, easier to have than by polio? the time it hits her, no, because she loves being ill. Oh. And by the time it hits her properly, she she won't be long for the world anyway. You right. know what I mean? But she's like she's just been diagnosed with it. And it's because she's fucking taking medication all the time and her nerve system's fucked. I have theories on Parkinson's disease mm -hmm. and people might be yelling right now in their car that I'm wrong. But it just seems like I heard Michael J. Fox was a cokehead. Fucking mm -hmm. uh, Richard Pryor was a cokehead, and he had a uh, lot of it. Yeah, Dudley Moore was a cokehead. Oh, yeah, Trixie, and they and they all got the same sort of rare nerve disorder of the brain that no one can quite explain how. Or whatever. And I'm like, it seems pretty like it's cocaine. Yeah, well, it's but my mother wasn't a cokehead, but my mother taken a lot of medications for other things her whole life, so she's always been a big fan of the the pill popping. Yeah, so you know. Um, is she pretty loving your mother is she a pretty loving she's, woman she is a very loving woman but she's also a very uh, we've had our fights over the years she, she was a hard she was a very strict mother to, and, and quite violent as yeah. well but we've, we've talked about it recently we've, we've had words and we've um, we've come to terms with it each year yeah it's very nice it's been very liberating it's only happened in the last year of my life dude that's funny the same thing happened to me yeah yeah I just had a big conversation with my mom the other day that was like I didn't even know that I needed to have, you know? Yeah. And then she kind of, like, we both kind of realized some things, and it was just, I mean, I, it was liberating, yeah. I, I realize now that she can't remember half the, half, oh. uh, maybe three quarters of it, she can't remember it. Because you block things out. Everyone's the hero in their movie, and you don't realize that you're a villain in many people's lives. You know, I have exes that are villains of mine, and then I'm probably villains of theirs, or yeah. you know what I mean, where you think, oh, you fucked me over, or whatever, or and so, so for many years, my mother was a villain at some stages in my life because of some physical abuse that I, I suffered, you know. And and but she since apologized. It was more the yelling. I was constantly being yelled at as a child. Yeah, you know, I was yelled at before I was spoken to. Just con and I wasn't. I wasn't a bad kid. And I and I thought I was a bad kid. And oh. I look back at it now, and I'm like, I wasn't a bad kid at all. I was a pretty well behaved kid. You know. Wow. Yeah. That's funny, man, to hear you say that because that's exactly some of the same stuff. Yeah, like I think my mom didn't speak to me in a way that was loving first that let me yeah. know I could be loved. And instead, there was this other tone that 
made me unsure what I was, wh how I was felt towards. I would go from being you're the best <clears throat> little boy in the world and you're a perfect child, I told you, to you're a piece of shit. And it would wow. happen within an hour. And so even to this day, I still have like this arrogance about me where I think I'm the best comic or whatever like that. And then I think I have fear before I go on stage. I'm like, oh, I'm shit. I'm fucking hopeless. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, like I still have these highs and lows. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I could I, see I, that. I still don't feel comfortable with myself where I can hang and just sort of, I don't have to impress anybody or I don't have to show off or anything to have worth. And you know, that, that all, it all stems from your childhood. It all, it all stems from that. You know, I dated someone who, who her whole thing in life was people thinking she was pretty or whatever. And if they didn't, then she was really angry. And so she would manipulate and try to bring down other girls around her and stuff like mm. that. You know what I mean? And then once I learned more about her childhood, I was like, I didn't want to go out with her anymore, but I sort of got it. Right. You know, I got that's what where, where she was always from a young age. That was what was told was valuable to her. You yeah. Know? And so... So I'll say this, both me and my brothers are very successful and we came from a very poor family, a very working class family. And, and I, I, will, I will say that my mother is the reason for our success. She put, yeah. she put a, a definite, and I don't, I don't know if it was a healthy thing, but she put a definite fear of failure into us where it wasn't an option. Mm. And that, that if we turned out to be losers, then, then it was just, that would be the worst thing in the world. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's funny how like yeah, it's like you probably needed that. Whatever occurred, you needed yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Oh, no. to have these opportunities. No, I still, I still, every bit of success I have, I still have a certain level of well, fuck you. That'll show you, <laughs> and that, and I'm yelling now. I'm just yelling no into one. the fucking wind. Yeah, I, I I get given a TV show and I go, well, that'll show you. Yeah. All right, who am I even <laughs> fighting with anymore? I have no one telling me that I can't do things, and I'm saying, well, I did it though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's weird. These sometimes these just these things we have going in our head, these patterns that are just existing in our head that we don't even realize. Sometimes, you know, um, that's the scariest thing. Is sometimes I feel like I'm trapped in some patterns that I don't even realize. You know, that aren't super helpful for me. But, but what, what's your pattern that's not super helpful for? You? I think like just being able, like my toughest thing is just being in relationships, being able to feel other people's love for me. Yeah, you know, it's really really hard, and so then it makes it like. It makes me feel like alone a lot of times, even though, or not cared about a lot of times, even though I probably am. Mm. So it's not that people don't care; it's that I can't f take it in somehow, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so yeah, that's this this thing that happens to me a lot. And then I get depressed and bummed out, and um, you know, and then the relationship I'm in will end because it starts to die because you're yeah. you're you're upset about the whole thing and you're in your head. Yeah, I I still I. I, I don't do as many misogynistic jokes as I used to, but I used to do some very misogynistic jokes, and I always stand by them. In the, in, <laughs> I'll, I used, stand by. I, I'll stand by them in the sense that I knew they were jokes. So, and the reason I sort of stopped yes. was I started to get bothered by the people who were getting the blood laughs out of it, who were laughing for the wrong reason. But, mm. I, but very clearly, I had some issues with women, and and that the, the, the problems I have and still struggle with is that my experience growing up, women were the mean ones. Who, yeah. You know what I mean? You were in trouble with them. And so that shapes relationships. I mean, now where I, if, if, if they start to get a little bit mean or uh, hard work or I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. I'm not, I'm not going to put up with it. So my, so my other fear is now, do I, what do I do? Do I just date women who are pushovers? You don't want to date them either. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? That's yeah. not what you want to be in that relationship either. No. So, so it's it's uh, you know I I think guys like us and and many people listening you have to acknowledge when you're hard to live with yourself yeah and that's that's something that you got to work on you know do you do stuff to work on have you ever like I, I I go to AA and stuff right now did you ever go through anything like that no I I, I gave up booze and everything for almost a year really and yeah I I realized until that right I, now are you still I'm no, I'm not. I'm I'm drinking. No, I'm not drunk right now. Yeah, but I'm drinking at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't hit it anywhere near as hard as I used to. But I do have, I do have a problem with binge drinking. I have a problem of, if I have a have a uh, ten beers, I want another five. You know, I've yeah. never, I've, I don't see any interest in having two drinks. You'll yeah. never, you'll never see me just go to the bar for one. Mm -hmm. I don't see the point in that. I, I'll go and have a water or something like that, but I'll never just, if you offer me a beer now, I, 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 it seems pointless to me. Yeah. But, but these like getting wasted is almost by appointment. You know, I like to get drunk I, and it seems such a, such a weird thing. And Americans 
frown upon that so badly. But well, I, in LA, they do. And the get, rest of America I get, doesn't. I get drunk very rarely now. Yeah. Very rarely do I get drunk. Um, and you know, a few times a month, and that might seem like a lot to people, but yeah. maybe three times a month, right? <laughs> and for me, it's like I enjoy that. I don't like the whole idea that you're not allowed to do it. It's like, I'm not going to get drunk at Thanksgiving, but I know there's a lot of people thinking, oh, I'm going to get fucking plastered for Thanksgiving because yeah. I don't have work the next day and I don't have this and, you know what I mean? And that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. They should be able to. They should be able to with no... And also, I don't believe I've I've ever... I'm not a nasty drunk, so... Yeah. You know, what's the problem? Yeah, I remember I was on your podcast and you were drinking that day and then you sent me a, a nice message later and just said, thanks for coming, yeah. which was like a nice thing to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you'd been drinking and I was like, oh, I didn't think that you would do that. It was nice of you. Oh, you thought I'd be mean. Well, I, just, I mean, it's a, you don't think that a, someone's going to get drunk and probably do something nice, you know, sometimes. Yeah, I shouldn't drink in podcasts, but it is fun. Oh, it was great, though. That was the best part of it was just, do you feel like people want to see you drink, though? Well, that's the problem. There's two, there's, sometimes you get people who... I, 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 one of my pet hates is when I get accused of being drunk when I'm not. Right. Like, so someone comes and sees the show and they'll write a review like, oh, I didn't pay to see some guy stumbling around <laughs> drunk. And you're like, I, was, I drove home. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you're like, I had a salad. Yeah, yeah. What it's it's like sometimes, and then, and then sometimes you play up to it a bit more and people think the show's out of control, but you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so like, there's only probably been three times in my whole career where I was ashamed of the level of drunkenness that I had, but I've done like 3,000 shows, so I'm all right with it's that. Not bad. I'm all right with that. Is it, it, do you notice as your career gets bigger and as you get like a, even as a bigger voice and stuff that, do you feel more responsibility to do like material that's more important or do you just feel like you're growing and changing and well at the moment i'm not doing anything political on stage because i do so much of it on the tv show right that i'm sort of politicaled out and i have sort of i'm regressing back to the comic that i i was in my 20s where I'm just, yeah i'm just telling stories about dating <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and fucking things it's that nice. are bothering me in the world and you know, there's stuff about being a dad but it's all degenerate dad stuff yeah. you know what i mean like you know, but I, I, yeah, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm simplifying my stand up a lot more. Back to big stories, man. I like it. Uh, like the, like the corner piece of my new tour at the moment is a thirty minute story about me shitting myself. Yeah, <laughs> but it takes thirty minutes. But it's so relatable. <laughs> it's relatable, dude. And shitting yourself never takes less than thirty minutes because yeah. it's, you know, it's one minute and then it's twenty nine minutes of fucking tightening. Well, the, the, the only, yeah, there's only one minute at the end is the shitting. <laughs> the rest of it's the preamble to the shit. And like the story starts with I'm lactose intolerant. So you know the ending. Oh, yeah. And then the rest of it is like an episode of Columbo <laughs> where you see the murder to begin with and then you have to figure out how we got to there. I love it. What was the moment? You know what I mean? So I, I like shit like that, man. Um, there's uh, That reminds me of that Dave Chappelle kick, uh, kicker in the pussy joke. Have you seen that one where he tells the punchline first? Yeah, yeah. And then he goes back and tells the whole story. It's pretty great. Yeah. Um, Let's uh, do we have any more Nick that came in? Yeah, we have a couple more. I have one uh, about the Jim Jeffrey show. You just said like you kind of get sick of the politics. Does it have is there something in the show that has to be political or oh, could you question. no 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 I don't get sick of, I, I, I don't get sick of the politics doing it on the show at all. I just don't want to do it on the weekends after I've been doing it through the week. Yeah. D does the um, show have to be political? No, Could you it, make it, it whatever it, you want? It doesn't have to be political. And and maybe 50% of our, our, our episodes are, have... Everything's political, first of all, but have social issues. So if we want to talk about healthcare or whatever like that, or we want to talk about something to do with parks or whatever the fuck, it becomes political. But as for talking about what the administration's up to no it doesn't have to be and i believe that we only talked about trump in about a third of the episodes and but we just get abused for all they do is talk about trump because that's all the people that want to complain are seeing and that's what goes yeah. viral and that's what goes viral and that's what gets the variety of hollywood reporter writing an article about your episode where they're like oh and then i bring down whatever but then there's things like charlottesville Charlotte, charlottesville happens you can't not talk about it that week yeah right so kavanaugh happens you have to talk about it that week. Otherwise, what's the point of what we're doing? You know, I, I would rather talk about fucking what's happening in, in lighter things. We don't want to talk about things that are heavy all the time because they're fucking heavy. But you have to talk about things. And hopefully when you do, you can lighten the load a little bit and make the news a bit more palatable for people that have been watching CNN the whole fucking time or Fox. They've just been weighed down with experts giving opinions. Why don't yeah. you hear a funny opinion? You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
or at least hear something. Yeah, I feel like the the news has jumped the shark too in America. It's not even news anymore. If is you, it the same in the, is it the same in Australia? I brought Forrest to England with me to do to do uh, some gigs, and he was just he, he goes, I can't figure out what's wrong with the BBC news. There's something not quite right with it, and I go, well, they're not giving opinions. They're just telling you what's happened. Yeah. They don't bring on a panel of experts. That's all CNN is. A Fuck pa- experts. A man. panel of experts. <clears throat> CNN's the worst. It's just panel, 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 panel. And, and they're who all are just they? Going, yeah, they're all just people who are just fucking want to be journalists or journalists or fucking whatever. And they, they're all experts? Yeah. On what? All of them didn't fucking think that- Ex-campaign uh, managers yeah. or, you know what I mean? Fuck tards, bro. All of them didn't think that Trump was even going to win. Like, that's the crazy thing to me. All these people, all these experts, and then they had no idea. No idea. So it's like how out of t- at that that's when for a lot of people the news jumped the shark. It was like these people don't know what the fuck they're well, talking pe- about. People think I got my show. People really believe that there's there's the Clintons are paying guys like me money to talk out against guns. Like they really believe that's what's happening. Yeah. Right? So I've done a load of rape jokes, and all of a sudden they went Hillary, <laughs> yeah. Hillary. We have the guy. Yeah. We have the guy that can really bring you over. It's rapey Jim Jeffries yeah. with these jokes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Like, it, it's very bizarre to me that they, they would think that I'd be the voice of whatever, yeah. right? But um, what was I talking about? Uh, people think you're paid to talk oh, about yeah, People think you're paid to give these opinions on all the things, but I had another point that was more valid than that. I fucking it slipped me. That's all right. Let's go back. What was a, of a second before that we were talking about? Oh, I said, um, yeah. The new- oh, oh when, we, when we started the show, we were making the pilot – during the election and we were about we had written a whole pilot episode that was being filmed a couple of days later that was all about hillary winning so people think that i got this tv show to speak out against trump or something i got this tv show thinking knowing that hillary was going to be the president right and writing hillary jokes that's what we were going to be doing and then he wins and then we had to go back to the office and go all right well we're writing a whole new episode yeah because we never expected it. I remember we were sitting with all the writers in the room and we were like, ah, it's all right. Yeah, she'll win Florida. And then we all left for the day. <laughs> yeah. And then we started texting each other. Oh, God. There was that moment when he started to win where you're like, there, there was a little bit of like, holy fuck, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. This is going to, you know, I, I wanted him to sort of come in and be good. Yeah. But there is, there is like one thing at the moment, if he gets that, thing with uh, people going to prison for long sentences for just weed crimes. Mm-hmm. If he gets that brought around, no other, pre- like, like really the, the Democrats have nothing to say about that. Cause that was really Clinton who fucking did that. And then yeah. before that it was Reagan with the war on drugs. And so they sort of, and then Clinton brought in the terms, right? And now it's like, if Kanye West and Donald Trump fucking get people out of prison that are in there for fucking life sentences for a little bit of fucking weed, yeah. then I wish I had my show this week so I could congratulate, gonna win. congratulate both of them. Then they'll win again. I mean, I just the interesting <clears throat> thing to me is just how out of touch that how so much of the Hollywood industry is they're now second, third, fourth generation Los Angeles and New Yorkers. Mm. And so they're not as in touch with the rest of America and what it's like to live in the rest of America. Mm. A lot of people in America aren't racist. A lot of people in America don't hate Latinos, don't hate gays. Mm. I feel like 40 years ago, 20 years ago, I think you had more of that, but I don't think you have that now. I think you have just a lot of this industry out here beating those people down with that so much. And they're like, who in the yeah, fuck are you the, talking the, the, to? The right aren't doing themselves favors with things like Shark. Charlottesville and that type of stuff and right. the people protesting the caravan. Tr- Trump plays into that. He, yeah, he does. He, I agree. He gives, you, he gives you fears that you didn't know you had, uh, that you're worried about this. I'm the only person who can fix it. And that's how you brainwash people is by saying, saying, here's a problem you didn't know you had, but I can stop it. That's how you sell snake oil. Yeah. That's how you fucking do it, man. Oh, yeah. He's a dirty business and dirty businessman, no doubt. Um, but I think America was ready to elect a fucking blueberry muffin they're just tired i think people are just tired of it they'd rather see they'd rather just fend for themselves i think a lot of people yeah well what do you think is going to happen in the next election then i think trump will win again in the next election i have a feeling he will as well it won't be as like like because everyone says she won the popular vote it'll be very close again yeah i think it'll be very close again i just think that like you're saying a lot more people i think less people will vote overall Yes, no, less people are going to vote overall. But, but I worry about the young people also getting, you know, have 19-year-old 19 ki- 19 kids. 
I mean, I feel like they should raise the voting age to 21, but if somebody can serve in the military, they should be able to vote. You know, that's only fair. Um, but it's just, I feel like now the biggest thing is manipulating kids in a weird way and getting them, like, you know, I see both uh, both these parties going after young people. But I guess that's the way it's always been, you know? Yeah, you got to let 18-year-olds, but yeah. you can send them to war. You should let them drink as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, my state was the last state you'll be proud that allowed 18-year-olds to drink Louisiana. And they wouldn't give us any federal highway money for years because we wouldn't raise it to 21. So not only could we drink, but we drank on fucking broken roads. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. Uh, let's get a couple more so we can get Jim out of here. Hey, what's up, Theo? So my question... Um is for Jim, I had a, and I guess for both of you guys, was there ever a point, or what was the specific point for either you or Theo, where you kind of made the decision to start bettering yourself, and you actually stuck to it? When was the moment where it really calcified, and you guys kind of decided to turn it around and really stuck to it? All right, thank you so much, Theo. I appreciate everything you do, man. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Well, the better yourself. I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a con I don't know if I've done that yet. I, I just feel like like old age has made me make some decisions that had to be done. <laughs> there wasn't a conscious, you know what I mean? Like like I'm I've always tried to better myself, you know. But I don't regret who I was in my twenties. I don't. Okay. I was a different guy, but it was somebody who needed to fucking exist to yeah. make this guy. You know what I mean? Like like I, I if I remained the same, there's nothing worse than a stand up comedian who was popular in their 20s and then they're still trying to pull off the same shtick in their 50s. That's a really good point. And it looks it looks like and I won't name some names we know some people who still wear the same Cat leather Williams still wear the same leather jacket they yeah, yeah. Oh, or Dice they, is a fucking yeah, asshole yeah I, I didn't say it right I said or, it. He's or, an asshole. or even like Dane's got a bit of that and yeah yeah, yeah I'm I mean? still gonna like, yeah like, the, put the tight shirt on and yeah we're, we're, you gotta age with he wears your Abercrombie and Smith shirt sometimes you know it's what I mean so yeah. it, and, there, and there's some comics and I won't say that who, who are in danger of this is about to happen to them and I didn't want that to be me. You know, I, I know I lose fans every day people are like fuck <laughs> you i used to like that but you hope you pick people up along the way right you know what i mean because my ticket sales are still the same as they've always been but i can see the shift in the, the audience and who are coming to see me and i just think if i was just like doing you know so i was fucking some bitch after a fuck if i was still doing right. that stuff which seemed like an angry fucking drunk 20 year old which is what i was then that would look kind of sad now yeah you know I mean? yeah it is i mean i think you have to be you have to be brave to recognize that. I mean, and, and to notice that and to be aware of it, you know, yeah. not yet. And, it, and it's also brave to try and evolve because also, that's risky. Also, you, you realize at some stage with a lot of things that you were angry at, you're like, what was I fighting for? I don't even, oh, know, yeah. what, I don't even know what I was angry about. And, then, and, and I'm sure I'll look back when I'm 70 at this age now and go, what was I worried about? I was constantly worried. Me too. Yeah, I'm always worried. I want to get to that stage because my father was a big worrying and now he doesn't worry at all. His life's trivial. <laughs> <laughs> his life's trivial he just has the most trivial fuck. my father keeps a slingshot right you call them yeah. slingshots yeah. right yeah on, on his on his table next to his recliner yeah and he has the doors open because all these cockatoos and lorikeets these big indigenous australian birds oh yeah the lorikeets man the lorikeets are beautiful little colorful mm -hmm. birds and the cockatoos these big white birds with the yellow sort of i thing saw some they have omar's birds on wilshire and i saw some over there and so they, they just fly around in my dad's house and he leaves some bird seed out there and the bir same birds come and visit all the time. He goes, but sometimes the cockatoos come in and they, there's the lorikeets mm. and they take the lorikeets, the lorikeets food. food. And so my dad keeps a slingshot to shoot the birds on the balcony. Mm. And he goes, yeah, they sort of fly off as it hits them. They don't yeah. die. It's the same ones. Yeah. <laughs> but that's like how his life is now. He's trying to fend for these birds to get enough f free food off him. And the cockatoos are his enemy. Wow. And it's like the like, Garden of Eden almost. Yeah, you're like, that's a... <laughs> That's a simple life. Yeah. That's a guy who's not worried about a lot. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I can't talk at the moment. <laughs> the, the cockatoos are bothering the lorikeets. <laughs> That'd be a great name for a special years, I feel like. The cockatoos are bothering, bothering the, the lorikeets. Lorike um, do we have any video questions that came in? Yep. All right, let's hit one. Hey, Theo. It's Johnny from Kentucky. I don't know Big that man. fan, obviously. Sending in a video <laughs> for your guest. I, I just wanted to ask why he's so salty about 
basically everything in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know his whole story, though, so I don't want to say too much about it. I was just curious. It seems like he always has something kind of negative to say all the time. Uh, Anyways, I'll be there at your show in Lexington. Super stoked about it. Going to bring out the wife. Good times. Awesome, okay, man. Bye. It'll be great. Thanks for uh, the question. Yeah, Fucking do you, typical American. Do you, <laughs> do you hate America? No, I don't hate America. And it's when I lived in the UK, all I talked about was UK politics or something like that. And because I have different views on the Second Amendment doesn't mean that I hate America. Right. I just did a little piece um, in the Hollywood Reporter today where I talked about becoming a citizen. I don't have any. No, I don't hate America at all. Amer America's given me many opportunities that I wouldn't have had without America. Yeah. And it's and I've amassed wealth and, and I've had a child and I have get to, you know, of course I, I, I love America. Do you feel like the American dream a little bit? I feel I feel it's a stupid statement in the sense that it's the same dream that anybody in any free country has. You know, the same thing in Australia, work hard and you'll achieve goals. Right. You know what I mean? And that's the same in Britain, the same as, you know, Canada has the same dream. You know, it's, it's, you've just branded it a lot better. Right. But I do believe in that ideal. I yeah. do believe that working hard and achieving goals and doing right by people and all those type of things that eventually you, you can succeed. Um, but do I hate America? No more than I hate <laughs> Australia. And yeah. I have my issues with Australia. No more than I hate Britain, where I lived for 10 years as mm. well. I, I think this idea that I, I, I believe that being true patriotism, um, being, being truly patriotic means being speaking out against your government or trying to find flaws. I believe uh, being patriotic doesn't mean you follow blindly whatever your government tells you to do and then you stand when you're told to stand. You yeah. know what I mean? I believe uh, taking a knee can be as patriotic an activity as standing for the national anthem. So yeah. that's where I sit on the matter. I, I you know, people might not agree with that, but but to, to act like I'm so salty. <laughs> I'm so salty towards America because I have a late night talk show, news based talk show. Of course I have to I can't go on about Australian politics the whole fucking time. <laughs> yeah. I have to mention the world that's around me. And also I do get fucked off at the no healthcare thing and all that type of stuff because, you know, I grew up in a different world than that, you know. Right. But I tell you what, the lobster here is the best. I love fucking baseball. I love pinball machines. Yeah. I like the women enough. Do you, you know what I mean? Do you no? feel like we're allowed to say anything positive about the government, though, these days? You can. No, of course you can say positive things about the government. It doesn't mean that you're you're not patriotic or you are patriotic if you do either or either. I, I just find that that is a distinctly American thing because I've complained about Britain lived there and I never got a complaint. And I can complain about Australian things and Australians don't kick back on me too much. Yeah. But Americans do have this. There is a, there is something about when you, you had to stand for a flag your entire life and pledge allegiance to it that you have this, when especially when a foreigner says something where you have this fuck you attitude. Mm -hmm. But you're allowed to be criticized. You're, you're not an individual. You know, I'm criticizing mass companies and governments and groups. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not an individual. It's not like I've just come over here and you're just one person. I've called you fat. Right, <laughs> which is still allowed. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. But your fat is. A... See, I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm all for fat shaming. Yeah, I'm all for fat shaming, and I, it's, I've just come to terms with this recently. Yeah, because I was a little bit PC on this as well. Like, oh, I don't know if you fat. No, no, I'm fucking fat shame away, man. Whenever I get a bit overweight, it's somebody saying one comment that makes me go, "All right, mm -hmm. I better lose weight." Uh, to think of all the addictions or all the vices. I've had in my life, whether it be uh, nicotine, alcohol, any drugs or whatever, food has been the biggest one for me ever. Really? F food has been the one where I have problems with food. I st I, I More than Coke and stuff? I, yeah, think? I crash diet on food and then I fucking fatten up again and then I get thin again and up and down. And it's like, you know what, man? I go into restaurants and I use restraint. I, I never order what I fucking want. Yeah. I order the oh. third thing I want. You know what I mean? And that's that's just me being mildly fat, the yeah. third thing I want. I if I was that. a real committed person, I'd pick the thing that I least Fuck want. Yeah. The burger. And I would fucking, yeah. The burgers. You I'd, get the salmon. No, I want you? the pasta before the burger, all right? Wow. I want a mac and cheese or something. And then I go, I can't have that. That's fat guy activities. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will have the burger. No, the burger's still. And then I finish with like, I will have a salmon 
with a couscous and a yeah. thing. And it's like, it's only dropping about 100 calories mm. on each thing. And I'm still doing it with the fucking creamy sauce on it or whatever. Oh, yeah, that white sauce? Yeah, but I'm still, I'm, calm, I'm not it. quite getting what I want. Yeah. Right? So I believe that any other addiction, whether it be heroin or cocaine or something like that, or cigarettes, definitely, people will shame the fuck out of you. We shame the fuck out yep. of you. you. You excuse me, are you smoking? This is like yeah. I have to walk the same street as you. Or are you doing uh, heroin here oh, yeah, at the Wells yeah, Fargo? Yeah, or like like heroin. Like look at yourself. Yeah. You're a fucking disgrace. Cocaine. You're a fucking dumb cokehead. Yeah. Right. But if you go, oh, you fat cunt, stop eating so much sugar, then you're an evil person. Yeah, that's true. It's still addiction. It's true. It's still addiction, and we're we're shaming every other addiction. We're yeah. shaming every other one except for this one. Yeah. And we could go the other way. Let's not shame any of the other ones. Let's not shame anybody. Wouldn't that be a wonderful world yeah. if no one was shamed? Yeah. But we feel as a society we need to shame people to make a difference. So here's the thing. If you're fat and you're fucking overeat and you eat too much sugar and all that stuff, there is a secret to it. Yeah. How to stop, exercise and watch your fucking diet. <laughs> you will live longer. And people, but people will say to you when you're a drug addict, they will say, they will say, you have a child, you have a this, how fucking dare you? Yeah, but no one, no one will go up to a fat person and go, you will die at a young age. How <laughs> dare you? You're a mother, you're a father. You yeah. know what I mean? And they should have as much right to say that. <laughs> they should. Nobody comes up to you at a Dunkin' Donuts and says, you put that, you have twins. You have you put twins. How fucking down. dare you? Yeah. How dare They will put on the side of cigarette packets in, in Britain and Australia pictures of people who have lost their foot oh, yeah. from cigarettes. I've never met a single Very person sad. who's lost their foot from cigarettes. Yeah. Show me the lung cancer <laughs> picture. Show me the thing. I've never met the foot guy. I've never met the guy hobbling around. I was a smoker. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it exists. So don't send me photos because I'm <laughs> sure it exists. But I, I know several people have lost a foot to sugar. Yeah. Several people. And, That's true. And you haven't on the side of a Coke can put a fucking stump yeah. to fucking shame me as I drink this sugar, which is an addictive substance. They reckon it's as addictive as cocaine when yeah. given to mice or rats or some shit. Sugar's a new caffeine, man. Sugar's a new uh, uh, nicotine, I mean. It yeah. really is. Yeah. People are so, like, sugar's crazy. People don't realize it's killing people, eating their skin. It's eating your grandmother out from the inside right now. Not in a fucking good way either, you know? Mm. It's <laughs> killing senior citizens everywhere. Yeah, it's the, sugar. The sugar, man. And and so I'm all for fat shaming. And yeah. I'm saying this as an overweight person. Yeah. I'm not, I don't consider myself fat, but I'm overweight, podgy speller. Your arms look, you know, they look like they could be strong or could have a little bit of fat yeah, on them, but got, also strong. got a little something to them. Some of that's, bo some of that you have a natural, like, a strength to you, don't you? Yeah, I'm, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, and that's Australians. I, Australians are the toughest people. I've traveled around the world a decent amount. Every time it's the toughest people uh, that are always like the, uh, just like, it's like a tornado and it's always Australians. Australians go everywhere. Australians are in everywhere. It's amazing to me that if you go to like Whistler, all the ski instructors are Australian. Yeah. And you're like, Sh couldn't we get Canadians <laughs> to do this? <laughs> We've got the guys from the hot country. I know. Yeah. Well, we're going to teach you how to ski. It always starts with now the bunny slopes. <laughs> and now you're ready for Death Man's Ridge. It's always like a fucking. Yeah, because they always, Australians are always, I feel like they're all like, just, I see a baby bottle with Red Bull in it. And they're all about to jump off the side of the fucking crib with wings on. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what with Australian, like Australian actors. And they're, they're as, you know, theatrical as anybody. Yeah. But we make like. The Mel Gibsons, the Hemsworths, the Russell Crowes, the thing. We make men. Yeah. We make men in the acting world. Even our more musical men are fucking Hugh Jackman. And oh, he's, Hugh Jackman's so talented. Yeah, and he's so but he's still fucking Wolverine. We make men. Yeah. And then Britain gives you fucking Mary Hugh, Poppins. Hugh Grant, Jude Law. They give you men, but they don't give you Fuck. men. They give you sponges. Yeah, you know what I mean? They <laughs> yeah. they, they give you blithering idiots. Tom they give you Ford. Pe people who are like, I, I, I'm so sorry. I, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And even Tom Ford. Russell Brandt. Yeah, yeah, not tough guys. Not tough guys. Australia give you tough guys, yeah. and Americans give you just douchey, bloody actors. Yeah, well, you I give us action stars. We give you, we give you uh, muscle bound black guys, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You give us black guys. Also, the sterile. But oh, even that was an Austrian that really pushed that. Who but was some, it? It was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. He was Australian? No, Austrian. He's oh, he's black. Austria. Oh. He could, I mean, but he's starting He's now. a black Austrian. <laughs> uh, Just, he's so muscular. No, I think, well, Americans have given some. We gave, uh, who have we given over the years? Oh, Brad Pitt. 
Brad Pitt, man. But is Pitty a, a tough guy? Is he? Is Clooney and Pitt tough guys? No, they're not. They're kind of like they're the, like uh, suave. You give suave. We can't spa gi- guys. They're guys that you'll see at the spa. We can't give you. We can't give you cool. We give you tough. Daniel, what's that? Daniel, what's a double? Daniel seven? Craig. Now, yeah, he's Who's a tough he? guy. He's yeah, he's British. He's British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's small and tough. He might be Welsh, actually. Yeah, I mean, they're they're a different. They're fucking breed. posh, aren't they? The Welsh. Yeah. No. Where's no. Newcastle? Newcastle's in England. Dude, I saw something new. I saw some things in Newcastle. I'll never forget, man. Large. Oh, he women. just brought up Burt Reynolds. That's your toughest guy. <laughs> Burt Reynolds, if he was younger, would have played Freddie Mercury in the movie right now. Like, that's that's the guy that you want to give me, Burt Reynolds? Hey, we got Frankie Muniz, too. Pull up Frankie Muniz, if you don't mind. Burt La- oh, Ma- Michael Landon. Michael Landon. Checkmate. <laughs> Michael Landon. Yeah, do you have... Who's you, your you Michael gave Landon? Us, you gave us Rock Hudson. Yeah. Rock Hudson was your toughest guy. Frankie he, Muniz he, he is died our, of the is, hip. This is Hollywood's new toughest guy right here. This little f- is he back? Frank is he, <laughs> oh, is he black? I mean black. <laughs> Who knows? Back. Frankie Muniz is he back? Um, I don't know. His wife looks nice. He's actually a really nice guy. I did his meet his wife, wife looks one time. Cute. Um, any more? We're good. Uh, we have one more. One more. Put it through. You think this guy's jerking off or not? Maybe. I hope. Hey Theo. Hi Jim. Big fan <laughs> of you guys from he- from Chile. Uh, I was wondering if. Either of you have any plans of ever doing a South American tour? I think that you would find uh, there are a lot of big venues and a lot of a, lo- a lot of fans of both of you, and I would fucking love to see you both. Big <laughs> fan, keep it up and get in there. Get in there. So uh, South America is the only place I haven't gigged. Wow. In the world, yeah, I've gigged everywhere else. I'm about to do these like Asian gigs and stuff, but I've never been. I just uh, there's something about South America, and, I, and it's my next place I want to travel, I guess, but. There's something about it. It always, it always feels like it's going to be dangerous. It, yeah, you're going to be pickpocketed the whole time. Oh yeah. And I was that like a, just a bad stereotype? Am I just being? No, I got. I went to Brazil once, and I got pickpocketed by a woman, and she and I got in a fist fight. It's the only woman I've ever, you know, been legally allowed to fight, and uh, hmm. and it was pretty. <laughs> I don't know if I, I wouldn't say anybody won, but it was fucking. There was no winners. <laughs> yeah, there was no winners. Yeah, but yeah, but I did. That's what happened to me. I got pickpocketed. But I have a big butt. I think I get pickpocketed a lot. I get, got pickpocketed in Prague one time, and I got pickpocketed in, um, in uh, actually in Minneapolis outside of the airport. So Minneapolis? Yeah. You got pickpocketed? It's not a hub for it, is it? I don't know. I've never, I've never been pickpocketed. I've been, I've been, once in Sydney, I was, uh, I was mugged. Oh, yeah? Yeah, go with a knife. Just oh. Give me your wallet, I think. If you could go back in time, would you do it differently? No, 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 no. There you go. There's the wallet. Okay. <laughs> good, good luck, mate. Um, you have a new tour. You going on a new tour, Jim? Uh, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm doing new material from my last, like, like that's not on my last special, mm-hmm. and I'm, it's called the Night Talker Tour, and that was, you know, that you have to name them. It's always yeah. the pain in the ass, and I was like, I was literally watching a thing on the Night Stalker, like a documentary. Oh wow. And they rang me up. I went, oh, the night talker. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. Um, but yeah, I, I'm about oh, to do wow. Australia, but then I'm about to do all these, these places in Asia. Yeah, Korea, Taiwan, Thailand. Um, well, we're doing field pieces for the TV show because that's, that's the big thing that my show has that the other shows don't have. I do my own field pieces. Mm. And so that's why we do less episodes because I'm off filming the field pieces. And our field pieces are all international. Wow. So the Daily Show does fucking just ones in America for the most part. And they got like fucking five people. I do all my own ones. So we're going to go out to Asia and we're going to be there for 18 days and we're going to record nine field pieces That's beautiful. And, and do like 10 shows. And you're a dual citizen now. Do you think that, that your life ends with you having a citizenship or exiled? How does it end? I think it ends with a citizenship. I don't see, my, see me being exiled. <laughs> I, 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 think, uh, I think... Like on your own I island think, somewhere? I think when I'm really old... There's a part of me that goes, maybe I'll go back to where I was born like an elephant. Yeah. You know, go back. But it's like, it all depends on what my son's doing with his life and how close we remain in the sense that will he be, you know, he might get married and live in Connecticut with some woman. And then it's like, by that stage, it's like, I might as well live in Australia if he visits me the same amount of times. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be one of these weird parents that's going to hold my child back or or travel to whatever city he lives in, you know? Yeah. So so for me, I I, I just, the next phase of my life, I guess, in the next 13 years, 
from now when my son's 18, I think I think I'll probably have another little shift or another little turn. But who knows? I I, I can see myself being retired by then as well. Oh, I think you're going to say retarded, honestly. I yeah, I think, okay, that as well. Not in a bad way, but I didn't know where you were going. I don't know. Really? I don't know if I'll be doing stand-up into my 60s do you see us yeah do you see a second career in you that you think about? i would like to focus more on the tv if, if i if i could get acting work i'd get it but i don't get offered much actually. really yeah it's, it's just funny like, i could see it kind of a little bit like kind of like a goodwill hunting like a hugh grant <laughs> but in goodwill hunting um but yeah, <laughs> i could be the actual janitor who can't do maths <laughs> just writing gibberish on the wall um uh, I yeah, you know, I'd like to do some. I, I feel like maybe producing or something like that, getting in behind the scenes a bit more. I could do, but I don't know if I could. You know, I've been doing theaters now for maybe eight years. Yeah, wow. I, I don't know if I could go back to going into a comedy club because I, I've never heard of anyone going theaters comedy club back to theaters. Yeah. So so on the way down, I don't think I would let it go that long. I think I I, I don't know. You know, seven or eight specials, and I'll probably record another two. Once you get to 10, it's like, how many jokes do you want to fucking tell the world? Yeah. It's like, if people like you, there's all the back catalogue to watch. The Beatles brought out fucking 10 albums, and then after that, they broke up, and they were writing songs by themselves, and no one gave a shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, still. Well, yeah, one of them was in the Traveling Wilburys, I think, at one point. I yeah. might have made that up. No, the Traveling Wilburys, yeah, <laughs> um, for do, a brief second. Do you feel bad sometimes? Like, I notice, like, sometimes you'll have fans that are really excited, and then you actually meet them, and you feel like you're a letdown, like, in oh, person. all the time. All the time. And and, and it's, it's, you know, I, I get a lot of people who come up and, get a cunt, and you're like, all right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to call you a cunt. <laughs> And you and you're like, I, I, especially I, in the U.S. where I, people aren't that familiar. And the, with it. I do a meet and greet after the show, but just for the people who bought the, like the front two rows, mm -hmm. you know, because I used to do a meet and greet with the entire audience, and it used to take like two hours. And that's stuff. what I've been doing, and it's it's draining me. It's brutal. It's br but it, it when you get to like six, like what size theaters are you playing? Like Eight hundred thousand? No, no, no. I'm at like maybe selling two thousand tickets a weekend. I'm still in the clubs, just starting to do some theaters. This right, year. right. But you, you you're selling, selling two thousand tickets, right? Yeah. So you're gonna go. You're about to go up to like these 800, 900 seat theaters, and then it's still manageable because like two hundred people stay behind. You went through it, but then when you go to like anything over a thousand seats, and you start like four hundred people start waiting in line. It's like takes you a long time and you've got to give them all a little moment, you know? Yeah. And so I just, once the theatres got over sort of 2,000, 3,000 seats, I, I just said, I'll do a meet and greet if, you know, for people, the, the first, first sort of, couple of rows. The first couple of rows who bought the tickets first before everyone else. Yeah. And so. Oh, so I like that. Yeah. So you do that and then. But even then, people get a little bit disappointed because sometimes you're exhausted, and it is like being Santa Claus. Like people come in one at a time, and you yeah, go, Hello. and you want to be nice to them. You want to be That's nice my to thing. them. But if I if I've had a few drinks, then I can chat and be very thing. But if I haven't, then I am shy in that situation. It is a very shy situation to be in because you, you're like. Did you enjoy the show? Thank you. And sometimes yeah. people will be honest. I've seen you four times. Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, this one wasn't as good as the last oh, one. And, like, and then like they, they just think they're just talking <laughs> and your little heart goes, oh, I, well, I put a lot of effort into it. Oh, okay. And then you're thinking about that for the next five people that come up. Is it weird? I'm starting to find that I can tell in the first five minutes if a show is going to be awesome or if it's going to be- Of course. Yeah, you can tell within the first two minutes. You can do things- to pick up the pace, you can get them back. You can, you know, they're the real triumphs is when the audience is shit and then you work them and work and work and then like the last 20 minutes is good. Yeah. That still classifies as a bad show. Yeah. Because we've just done an hour and 10 that wasn't enjoyable for any of us. And then uh, towards the end you went, oh, we better start enjoying ourselves. Our time's running out. Yeah. And so, and I've also had ones where the audience has been great and then I've been a little bit um, complacent with that and I've, lost them and had to get them back oh, again you know yeah. where you go oh, oh like where you think i'm not going to give them all the a stuff because they're such a good crowd i'll give them some new stuff that i've been thinking about and i'll give them the a stuff later on in the show but i'll just you know this crowd's so hot i can try out this new stuff and then the new stuff isn't that good and you lose them and you're like ah fuck and then you want to say look that's new <laughs> <laughs> that's new that's not my best stuff i got stuff coming up i know it's fun though is it still fun it is still fun. The traveling's lost all of its luster and the hotel rooms, but the, I still, the best part of my day is still the, the show. Yeah. That's the, be, that's the bit I look forward to all day. So that says something, right? I think so. You know, you still get, I still get, I still get excited um, 
when I'm driving up to the theater and I see a line of people around the block, you still think, wow. Because I remember the first time that happened to me and I remember thinking, oh, there must be other people, another show in here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I thought like 200 people had bought tickets this day and I, I saw like 900 or something. It must be White Snake or something. Next yeah. Door. <laughs> and I was like, nah, that lineup was for me, you know? Wow. You know, I, I, um, yeah. Does no, it make no, you feel good? Of course. Yeah. Of course it does. Yeah. It still, it still validates you, whether it shouldn't. Yeah. But it still makes you feel wonderful. Yeah. It's, it makes you feel loved as well. And it shouldn't make you feel loved. Right. But that's yeah, what's yeah. wrong with us. To, 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 quote, to quote Cool Runnings, if you're not enough with it, you won't be enough without it. Yeah. Right. But I, mm. I, uh, I'm at this moment, I'm not enough without it. Yeah. And I hope to reach a Zen like state where I am. But uh, dual citizen, guys. <laughs> Jim Jeffries, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for man. having me, man. Yeah, I really myself. appreciate it. Now I'm just floating on the breeze. And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself unwind Shine!